Okay. Uh, 
Oh? When I, after the first year, my dad, uh, I asked if I can come home, and he said, no, Lehrjahre, also learning years, sind no master years. So, stay where you are. And I had to make my time. And after this time, I make my full military training uh, in Arbeitsdienst yeah. for one year. And in Arbeitsdienst, I, uh, she pushed me in the kitchen. So I had a different job. Yeah. I learned to cook. Now Dresden, was that the center of... Uh, Saxonia. Yeah. Uh, and also they had a lot of uh, porcelain, ceramics. Yeah. 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 Alt, uh, you see, uh, Dresden uh, was a big city where the uh, Meissner porcelain yeah. uh, is, uh, uh, is in Meissen, is a big castle. After this, in this castle, uh, they come, that Meissner porcelain had on the back the cross schwarz. Uh, and I saw it uh, one time, and we had a, uh, we learned a lot. Uh, you know, uh, the, all these things uh, in Meissen, uh, is one, uh, uh, and Dresden is, uh, Dresden is uh, more for fancy stuff, for, uh, yeah, figurines. Also, uh, you know, uh, in this kettle, this comes noch back to in Albrecht's time. Also, Albrecht uh, war uh, in uh, Kurfürst, yeah, and he owned this. Uh, he delivered a lot of things uh, in around the world. And now uh, is this Dresden Porcelain in Ireland. Yeah, moved it. Ireland. They, they moved it to Ireland. Uh, so, uh, many things I remember. I have now a book uh, that's all this porcelain and all the things that you had in Dresden uh, store. Uh, she came to the castle in Königstein. And uh, she is in back now. Uh, after she died, sometime, she moved it to Russia, but she had to bring it back, but, while this was history. Uh, and I have a special book where you can see what what she brought back. So uh, we are uh, many things seen are destroyed in this big air ride, yeah. and uh, there is nothing to re uh, repeat what happened there. Yeah. Uh, I have books, uh, but I know for the years. Uh, I was a little boy, was going through the streets. The Prager Straße was the main street in Dresden, and then the Altmarkt was the place where they had uh, so many, many things of uh, uh, stark at Christmas time, the Strippelmarkt. And uh, so this is all of children remembering for me. And uh, so uh, Dresden, but you know, after. When, when I was drafted to the army, I had to move all around, so I came even out uh, from Romanian, and this is the reason that we lost our home, and we had came here to the United States. Uh, where did you start the school? The school started, I, I started in Brand Erbesdorf by Freiberg. Uh, Freiberg is a, a world uh, history from uh, uh, the uh, big organ in the do im dome to Freiberg. I find in Los Angeles the music on the record and I, I bought them there. So uh, I have still the music from this big dome. The big dome in Freiberg made the Silverman organ is still there. Uh, so, uh, you know, in, in the time we, uh, we had the uh, we visit twice in uh, in Germany. Uh, yeah. yeah. You have to change. You can you can go on. Yeah. Yeah.
what year were you drafted? Huh? What year were you drafted? In 1937. 1937. Uh, I had uh, what uh, used to, uh, to make my two years. In a, in a in a tank corps uh, in Saxonia, and uh, I was there for two years, and then the, the, we were marched into Czechoslovakia, and then the, the oh, war started in yeah. Poland. Where did you take your basic training, your first? In Commons in Saxony. Yeah. The how long? How long did that last? The, 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 yeah, two years. Two so, years. Yeah, you see, uh, uh, our basic training was well, yeah, for the uh, half year, but this was still going on with all this uh, uh, training for the war. Yeah. Uh, we were on, uh, at the time in, in, the, in the basic training, even on a, on a big uh, camp place, where even my, my father won the First World War. And the same place. <laughs> did he ever talk about the First World War? What he did? Yeah, he was in Stratta. He was? In the First World War. Where? In uh, the same place, Königsbrück by the West. That's what very interesting for me. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, uh, he, uh, he not mentioned anything what they have done there. Yeah. Or we do know basic training oh, is yeah. a bad time. <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah. you know uh, we are the one uh, in the training there, and uh, we had no idea for what we make something like this. And we find out when we march into Czechoslovakia, that's for our training yeah. in Korea. Uh, ever take part in any of the big rallies at Nuremberg? Or the... No, 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 we never. Uh, you see, in Saxonia, uh, we, uh, we had no. Uh, you see, when you uh, learn, you never have to you uh, no uh, opportunity. My my master uh, had uh, forbidden me to do any politics during my learning years, and. Uh, I never had an opportunity uh, to uh, join anything. So and, uh, when you got drafted, uh, you cannot be a member of anything. Uh, when you be drafted, this is why I'm surprised that this question you are asked here many times. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, when you were drafted or when you are a soldier in the army, you cannot be a member of any party. Uh, this, uh, this is what I want to say. Yeah. September 1st, 1939. September 1st? 39, when Germany went into Poland. Yeah, uh, we were already laying on the, on the borderline for, for July. Also, you know, I was a motorcycle rider at the time. And I was only uh, riding between the higher stuff when our group, we were on the tank corps. We had our own, uh, we ran our own, and our own business with the division. You know? yeah. What exactly did you do on the border? Wait, what did you do? Motor cigarette. Well, well, we we carrying about, messages or what? Yeah, better. Between uh, the higher staff ones, uh, we had to pick up all, every time the, the This was even my uh, uh, this motorcycle ride was the best time in my life. <laughs> and nothing to worry about. But well, then we marched into Poland. Uh, uh, we are one uh, running to uh, on the when we run to the Wexel River, we uh, get a comment to come back with going to Warsaw. When they were halfway to Russia, well, Russia already gone. What did you do on that day, September 1st? What did you do? September 1st? Yeah. Oh, uh, driving around the circle uh, and uh, get others. As I, you know, uh, I remember now uh, that. 
that we had to, before we are moved in to Poland, uh, we are one staying in a little town, and from this town we are one only driving in a circle to get straight to, uh, to Krakow. Krakow was the biggest yes. city there. Did you go to Krakow? Yeah, we are came to Krakow. We are one staying overnight in Krakow in a, in a big castle. Although, like a festival, you understand the castle, yeah. yeah. It's a very nice place over there. And, uh, over there. We are staying only overnight and uh, we are moved on bits to the right of the river. But going through this loop leak, done later. Also after we are on the right of the river, uh, when we weren't staying at the... <laughs> when we weren't staying at the right of the river, we are so I have a return. Was there much resistance from the Poles when... Uh, you mean, uh, the, 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 like this? Yeah. The distance was only over the river. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, oh, you know, that's why you're moving ever so, so fast. So, uh, we saw only uh, the prisoners coming this way or we going this way. How long did it take to uh, uh, conquer Poland? How many weeks? I guess it's for only one week. That we wanted to clean, uh, not much more than over one week. And uh, the last place was a very nice uh, uh, army camp place where we were once staying overnight in Lublin. And then we uh, came this to the uh, to a little river, I think. The name was Ku. It was a, a, a small river. And we were once staying, and the Russians were on the other side, and we were on this side. So the Russian came to us one day uh, to greet our commander and uh, we were surprised they came with the big Cadillac, the old type, yeah. and uh, uh, in, in uh, one of the wagon, also in, uh, with four wheels, ne? not like with, uh, with the chain from the front, four wheels. And when they went start, we had to push them. So, the Rambo won't forget this. Yeah. <laughs> Were you, did you take part in the siege of Warsaw? Uh, no. No? Uh, we, had not, uh, uh, we had no, uh, on the halfway, we had to go back uh, to, on, on our line. Yeah. You see, uh, this one, yeah, uh, the, every division had a, a part. Yeah. And uh, when I did end, I was driving all the time, the day and night, on my motorcycle, when I had a problem with my leg. So I came in the hospital in Lublin, and she transported me home. Uh, so I never had opportunity to go to the West. I was then in the hospital for months. What was wrong with your leg? Uh, I had an accident in the uh, bunch sport. It, uh, I uh, jumping over the horse and I jumped on, down on uh, my leg for a uh, uh, belly. So I, I came like this. Yeah. Put that move in. How long were you in the hospital? Months. Uh, she tried everything to get this. Uh, and so they, they turned me down over to, uh, I was only not, I was not more ready for the war, so I was gave a Heimat. Only after they make me gave a Heimat, I uh, was trained for the closing room and, uh, to do uh, work in the office. And uh, that was the reason that I came to Stolpenburg. And uh, then, when uh, we were called as Heldenklau, that's for him, when he was looking for all the soldiers he can get, I was one too. Okay. 
I came back and forth on came and talk. Why, when was that? That's all I did before the 45. All right. 44 to 45. Okay, I, have, I, I can look it up. Yeah. The, where uh, were you sent then? Where did you go? Uh, I, in, the, in the line from uh, Jabba the Cross, La Russia. Go to Russia? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When I'm wounded by Stalin, you know, the, the state. Yeah. And here I have oil from there. Yeah. This was on the 5th September in 1945. Uh, because I was. September 45, 44. 44. Yeah. And where, where was this? Where were you wounded? By Stalino. I'm black, I'm at the Black Sea. Yeah. Were you captured there? Is that yeah. where you were? No, no. She sent me home uh, in, a, in a hospital a train when I came this, to Germany, other than now is uh, uh, the borderline between East and West Germany. So I had one in the hospital. But busy in making ready again on that I, I came back in my wife's hometown, Stolten. On the on Dante, uh, that came the last minute to come out. Yeah. On uh, the uh, I came back here in, in a, a panel tour company. We were built up from uh, uh, in Frankfurt Oder. On that uh, after this. South, then you had to go back south of Berlin. I was in, uh, in Russian, although uh, as was not Russian. We had to go back with food. Now, where were you captured? Where were you? South from Berlin. Yeah. To catch me. Yeah. Oh, that was he, you, he took everything what I had. The first thing what he asked was bring Ura on. Then the way, the way, who, who they, who they catch that so. Where they take you? It's frozen, and while I was wounded, and uh, when they checked us, the uh, uh, Russian doctor, the woman, checked us to hundred and hundred on a, on a big field, and she said, not courage. Three. Uh, she checked all in one, two, and three. When you were three, you had to stay there. When you were two, she transported you back to Russia. But, uh, by one, you were up to Siberia. And what was one? One was up to Siberia. You know, that's why we were in there against all the people who were very really healthy. And which one were you? Three. Three. Better. So he stayed there? You had to stay there on the other there. Had to walk back to Berlin. Walk all Berlin. How long were you a prisoner there? About uh, three months. Three months? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How I do you get it? Doesn't the food fast? Mm -hmm. Could you tell us how you were treated by the Russians in the prison camp? Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I so, And uh, when, when we were captured, I was... I, I was driving all day a, a German car with a, a Russian doctor. He went... He, he could not drive a car, so he asked me to drive the car while I have started them. And in the evening he asked if I can talk Russian. I said no. So he would not take me long. So he uh, put me uh, to the other one, and there yeah. was, uh, see, see have not, uh, there was no difference up, up this one civilisten or up this one soldiers. 
the prisoner want all. All the people want them prisoners. Ne? And so uh, we were on, uh, on a big place overnight. It was like a, it was kind of like a railroad station. And uh, then uh, they give us only a piece of raw meat, two slices ripe, uh, white toasted bread, or it was not white, or something else. Right? And, uh, and uh, this was all what they give us to eat. And you could not eat this raw, raw meat. So in the night I had uh, my uh, show also my uh, mess, what do you call us? Your mess. Yeah. 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 this Yeah. 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 Always catched on the ground. We are one walking slowly and you know, like this. Uh, we are catched wood when we are so on, on the mm -hmm. ground, and in the evening we make a little fire and cook this. Well, then uh, I uh, this was all what they give us in the beginning. And uh, so uh, we are we are marched this this Bosnian. This is. Uh, the big city on Poland, and when we arrived there, there, there were little uh, houses built. There came always hundred in one little housing. We were laid. When one was turning, everybody had to turn, since nobody could sleep. There were no roof. And uh, we found out that we couldn't do this maybe better. We are going down uh, looking for wood. This, uh, the housing was not ready, the one, some houses were empty. Ne? So we are make shares in, that we had not one share extra. Mm -hmm. and the Russian came and took this wood away from us, so we are, they said, when you, not, uh, when you use this wood, you not get any coffee to drink. Mm -hmm. So. This war on busy checked us when they had checked us we are uh, when we were down on the way back to Berlin we were always hundred men all kinds of you soldier or the Berlin uh, Berlin people Old men and uh, so we came on a place and they had put big tanks, also for like what we are, what we are used to be had for water wagon. On this we had to cook some stuff, but they gave us this was dry food. Ne? And then was so sick after a while. And uh, they asked for 100 portion, and they could not get more than 82, 80, 85. So it was so close to a fight for the food. Yeah. So when we arrived in, uh, in Helmstedt, uh, and uh, I think it's for Helmstedt. I know, I've been over the border in Helmstedt. Yeah, and when, uh, when we arrived there, no, we arrived by Dank. Uh, she said, yeah, the Red Cross will take care of you. Mm -hmm. oh, well, no, no Red Cross. We are, we are walked and walked ne, bis Dangerminde. Mm -hmm. And in Dangerminde, we hang, hängt us on a Russian munition train and came in the next morning to Berlin. In Berlin, the people were staying on the street. I remember now, I had a big overcoat from the, from the Air Force. I never joined the Air Force, but I, I find one. And so, with, in this coat, we asked, you know this picture? And they showed us pictures, now, if you have seen anybody. Now. And uh, you see, we were really tired. And, really sick. 
worn out. And then we are, uh, I went back also, to Hungary for my wife. I had no idea where my family was. So this was a, when I then came to Berlin Spandau and uh, I reported to, for work and she put me right in the bakery. So this uh, one of the days an old man came from Stolpen from my wife and bought a letter. So we know she was alive. And I decked uh, the papers and was going to East Germany and asked for uh, the trip to Stolpen Pommern. And this was the way that I came to Stolpen early in the morning. And I thought nobody is here anymore than there was a war, a flag outside, uh, with a uh, Polish flag. So, uh, oh, my wife was at the home, bit, not, uh, the mother passed away during the time. And our little daughter was with uh, her. She had only not one room. The rest of them were occupied by the Polish. And then uh, I had to look for a job again, and I worked for, in a bread factory for the Russians. Oh, this was 24 hours for nothing. No, uh, no money, only on the weekends they give us Produkte, and this was a cow food with all the fur and everything else. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and the, oh, our, the grandma from my wife, she know what you can do, and we had the soup out. Yeah. This was the roughest time in our life. That part was for me too. I mean, to buy anything. We had to work as a kid on a farm just to get some food. Good. Yeah, and then. Uh, How long did it take to get from where you were held prisoner back to Berlin? This one uh, about a week. About a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was a week. Uh, you know, uh, oh, there were always 100 men in a crew. And there were uh, a few Russian soldiers. And one time I, I went to uh, take my water out. So he came and pushed me his gun in the back and I could not walk anymore. Well, this is, uh, he had no reason to do this. What do you want to do? Done it. Effective for the Russian and then they, they had only girls on guard and then she when she, uh, one time, she said, I had 12 hours work night shift, and I said, I go home now. I am not a prisoner, I am on, I, I am already home. This Russian girl said, you still a prisoner for us. So, you have to work when you have to unload a truck with flour. I said, no, I am not do it. So, I had to look for another job and I couldn't find a place in the uh, factory for the tank core. So I had an idea what, what to do and so I, and there came a trouble that, that he took me over in this factory and there was a special built Kreml where only the people were working there and so she said, you move here too. When I went moved, the Polish people said, you cannot take anything with you, it does not belong to you anymore. It belongs to the Polish people. So we are one not. We are one not anymore. So this uh, well, the must say then that the Poles said because you were wearing that old uniform was wearing the Yeah, I know had any clothes. We didn't have any clothes at home. Everything was stored what we had. From his tender um, uniform, you know, the black one without a French on it. But anyway, they said USS Schwein mm. and put him into prison. Of course. 
die, now you have to heal. This, this is for them. She hit me in the knife. With the stiebel, they came in. And they come and said, ah, he said, tomorrow morning by 8 o'clock you will be released. He promised. He promised. However, in the night, the, the other came and hit me. And I had no, Ruth brought me a piece of bread. When I was laying in the basement there, I heard that the rats came and eat my bread and eat on my, my toes already. I mean, I'm going to get this. Uh, the, this commissioner, he had arranged that we could go meet at the train to West, West Germany. Oh, you know, uh, there were always, uh, how many? 60 people, eh? In the, yeah, 50. Uh, the, the train cars were yeah. inch smaller in Germany as the here. And then uh, old, all old people, our young people, did not let out. Our, I was lucky on here, uh, let us meet on this train. What, what did they let you out? Uh, at what reason? Yeah. Well, I, well, I was sick. Also, I could not uh, do anything anymore. Well, no, I looked already like an old man. I had, a, I had a big beard. No. Then uh, we came to Stettin, in Stettin. She let us on the railroad track stand there without anything. For three days. For three days. No, no the the water we are, we are safe in a, in, a ba in, a, uh, in my in yeah. <laughs> again. Yeah. No. Someone um, had a cane and we were hanging it out of the train to catch some rainwater. That's where we boiled coffee with. So, and then uh, when we went there, we arrived then in, in the English sector in, uh, by Lübeck, and then we were free. This was a release for us, and uh, we came then in barracks with two, four families, one and a half barracks. And I was lucky, I found right away a place in the bakery, and the boss he, uh, offered me a uh, uh, Fifty dollars uh, apartment. So this was our way. That's where we were in reunion. Uh, 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 yeah, he went. He came the twenties, June forty-six. We came to Kiel, and the next morning we went to to the employment office and asked for work, and they gave him this address. And he went there, and he said it's already taken. Somebody was here. And the next morning when he went back to the employment office, he gave him the same address. And he said, well, I was there yesterday and it's already clean. And they said, no, the master called back and he wants you to come again. And he just gave him the job because he was a baker and also to ride the truck. Since he had been with a punter company, you know, he gave him the job. So he was working during the night and delivering in the afternoon. So we were... Most happy, I think we were lucky because the other people we were still visiting in, in the camp, they still didn't have a job. How long did we stay in the uh, English then? Then we came uh, to the United States. Why did you come to the U.S.? Uh, you see, the one evening in the church, the, uh, the pastor asked me if I want to go to the United States. Then uh, we had lost our home in the East, and there uh, was the opportunity. And when I came home, who said, we lost everything already twice. 
now you want to go in a, in a another country and uh, you not know what what we have there. You I can said. even speak English, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> now and then. The preacher asked me after weeks again, Helmut, have you written down the, the application? Then uh, I said, who uh, said uh, she seen her like to go? So I came home again and asked her, and she said, okay, when the Lord wants, let's try. And then we sent our picture in, but we have not mentioned anybody. Then I had a, a job, but trying to make uh, my uh, master degree and uh, you know and everything's why are going all right and I, I worked hard in the time when you be in a bakery you always have to work hard. I, uh, we, were, we worked even for the British YMCA. This one of the big things you know the British YMCA had a, a place in Kiel for the soldiers and we delivered the pastries. So uh, we uh, had a very good opportunity to make pastries, but well, even not in, uh, for, the, for the German people. And, uh, then we, uh, I learned a lot of things in the time. Then uh, we, uh, we get from the United States the uh, mice flour, also what you call your cornmeal. Nobody in Germany had ye baked bread from cornmeal. Mm -hmm. eh? And uh, they had no idea what, how we could handle this. So uh, we tried our best to uh, make bread, mixed rye flour with cornmeal together. And uh, we are, usually we put our bread uh, in the oven and on the shelves. Not like here, that you have the shells hanging, so you have a big, big sh uh, shell where you put the bread in, from the from front piece to the back. Or oh, you can not do this with uh, cornmeal. So we had to uh, use pans. And, uh, really, we uh, had something for the people, for the public to eat. Now, this was after the war. And, uh, yeah, and then, uh, now we had to go then, uh, I used my vacation to go in the camp to get the shots. And, uh, and uh, one day we uh, came to Peppendorf, yeah, for Peppendorf, eh? uh, by Bremerhaven, in, in the camp. And uh, uh, two or three weeks we were standing there in the camp. Everybody had already the address. Ah, the Bremen figures that was, yeah. yeah. No, and uh, we had the, uh, most of the people had already the address where they come. And, but we are run from the church resort, uh, church world service sponsor. And uh, we had no idea where we come. You First, see, we made our application in 1950. And this was 52 when we heard from them. That long to go to red tails and they found out that we were really um, yes, checked out all over. Yeah. Oh, then uh, uh, one day. Uh, yeah, and uh, when we arrived in New York, also we were in 10 days under General Batchford. This was uh, the army ship who they brought the soldiers to Europe and we came back. Oh, there were not many Germans. You can count them. Oh, I was always really willing to take a job, so I, they put me right as police chief and the steam for the, for, the, for the refugees. And when we came there, uh, we had to go one day, I had to go one day early already on, on the steamer. And when we arrived on the, with the boat on the ocean, people were already bringing stuff out and said, uh, they not bring us to the United States, they bring us only in 
in the big water on Nancy Dumbas. And so we had to take some time, really uh, hard to watch the people that plenty one all sick. They one say sick already, one say some one you could not understand. And uh, when we arrived in New York, they let us not still in the, in the boat and it was a holiday. After Sunday. 10 years, it was Sunday and we, and we weren't staying already on the beer and saw all the cars coming and I said, just look to me like to have a big car race there. <laughs> the cars came, also, you know, when you, we had never seen something like this. No, and, uh, I had to wait this to the last man when we came then down from the steamer and, and Ellis Island, when we saw now the pictures from Ellis Island and everything yes. that reminded us at the time. You know, and uh, even our granddaughter said... Liberty was the first one, you know. Hmm. What was your reaction when you saw the Statue of Liberty? My wife had ri uh, write an article in the all, newspaper. All the others on board, they were clapping their hands, you know, what we were just standing there and with awe, you know, and overwhelmed. We felt a, really a lump in our throats when we saw the lady who lighted up the way for us. So, uh, so we came to Ellis Island where we really received our name tags. Well, then we so get our address was. to Bonga City, Oklahoma. We had a map with us, but there was not Bonga City on. Oklahoma City, yeah, but Bonga City was not so fine. Why so, Bonga City? Uh, she had a sponsor for us in, the, in Bonga City, in the bakery, in the Presbyterian church. Service and different churches were sponsoring. Also, the us Presbyterian and church in Bonga City uh, uh, is our sponsor. And we were uh, sponsored. Um, we are still the members for the Presbyterian Church, then, uh, you know, uh, we are thankful for these people who have sponsored us. And uh, when we arrived in Bonga City, there were, I had only an envelope with $20 in the hand, and, uh, and then there were about 18 people to greet us and to take, uh, take us in. And they brought us to the church with the thanks to the Lord in the church, we arrived to Bonga City. All the next day I had to work right in the bakery and I could not speak a word English. I, I asked when I was leaving the home and by two o'clock in the night, I said, who's what I have to say when I come in? She said, you only say good morning. <laughs> in the papers, you have to work one year for one sponsor. And, uh, I keep this from us and one man from our bakery there, he said, Helmut, there is a place in Newkirk, he would like to go over summer and uh, maybe uh, you can, you, are, you, are, you can do this and uh, maybe somebody pay for it. Right? Well, I say, I have no money. So uh, I talked to the preacher and the preacher said, a preacher without a pulpit, but the baker without a bakery. So, you try, and I sent you a businessman me to Newkirk, and he can uh, arrange this. And so, I was here going to Newkirk, and I'm still here. And we had to uh, make a lot of things, and we are thankful. What year did you come to Newkirk? What year? In 1954, no, Richard? Oh, to Newkirk we came to 1954 or 53? 53. 53. 53. Yeah, 1953. And, uh, and 55 was a fire. Yeah, and 55. Uh, tell us about Ellis Island. Uh, um, maybe you have the, the right up here. Oh, that's a bad. In Ellis Island we got our name tags and uh, we were checked through. Of course, uh, we had already been in a camp uh, in, in Germany, and so our health was good. So we didn't have any problem there. And uh, then they went through custom. Our boxes we had bought were opened, and they checked it. 
no? Yeah. It was, yes. And then they were rolled away. We never saw them. <clears throat> they were shipped to us and two weeks later by freight. But anyway, it didn't take very long. Ellis Island, the bosses were there and people had already their destinations. If we got the envelope, like Helmut said, we were called and got the envelope uh, that we were met at the train station in Ponga City. So we had a map from uh, America with all the uh, states on it, you know, and we looked, there was Oklahoma, but we couldn't find Ponca City. All it had on it was Tulsa and uh, uh, Oklahoma City. But um, uh, it took us three days to come from there. We went with the Airy to Chicago, and there we had to change to the center fee here, this way to Oklahoma. The, the red coast to the um, place in Chicago. Yes, and uh, and in Ellis Island, the Salvation Army fed us our first meal. We got cocoa and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I make donuts so long. Yeah. I never make donuts in Germany. We looked at it and we said, why do they put a hole in the donut? Yeah. Well, when we went, the, um, who was? There was a colored man on the train, yes, and he said, you are next to get out. And uh, so it was no care. We wanted to get out. And he said, no, 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 not here. It's the next station in Ponca City. And we were ready in Newkirk, you know. It, it's so funny. It, people always remember that. But then in Ponca City, he, he put the little steps down and we could walk off the train. And there again, everybody took our luggage, and we didn't even know the people, and someone carried Iris off. And uh, so that was the first scare we got. Now we lost the rest, <laughs> even our little daughter. But they had about 18 cars, and they were bringing us to the Presbyterian church downtown. And they had the first sermon for us, and they said, what are they seeing? And I said, they think the Lord is my shepherd. And, and so, we, we were really overwhelmed by the uh, hospitality and the welcome we received in, in Ponca City. They even had a, an apartment ready for us with everything in it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they went with us to the grocery store and they say, you pick out what you like to have. Well, we didn't know. We picked out some bread and sausage and, and they said, no, no, for everything what you need and for your meal, for your first meal. Well, I didn't know what to expect. We didn't have any money. And they, she said, well, if you do not know, we know. And so she just started to... Build up a bag, and we never saw so many stuff. The grocery start, and she paid $25 for it, you know. We would have never been able to, to pay that much. Helmut received $35 a week on wages. At the time. For a week, for the three of us. And we could live on it, yeah. At that time, prices were low, things were good, and we changed around. <laughs> yeah, but we are, we are still accused, old-fashioned. Yeah. Yes. You know how you say it. Did you ever return to Dresden after the war? Yeah, we are returned twice. 1965. 65, we make the yeah. first trip back to Germany, and uh, uh, we are visit all our old places, all my hometown. Helmut had seen it after the war, how it was. Yeah, my, my dad passed away. Destructed. In, in, in 19... Yeah, and then I had to come to Dresden. It was always the, the same line. We always, Dresden has to have to go. It was a beautiful place. You know, it, it was a beautiful place. I have pictures at home. How it was destroyed and how it looked now already today. Next time you have to come and yeah, then maybe we have done pictures, or the, I have my movie ready for, uh, for what we have done in between. Maybe who said the, the book ready for, for all this oh, excitement yeah. we had last week. Oh, yeah. Are you writing a book about it? No, no, I do not write. I just uh, make a scrapbook from everything, yes. No, I do not. I'm not a book writer. I do not have time for that. I used to work six years at uh, the newspaper in Germany before we came here. So I'm familiar with it, but I think helping my husband is more worth than going out and 
get paid more, but he needs my help. What are you for that? Who's Elfriede? Elfriede. Olga, after my mother, I have three names. I got four. Yeah. Oh, no. Renate Elisabeth Clara von Stanze. Oh, pretty. Catholic, European form. Where were you born? I was born in Stolp in Pomerania. It's a Baltic Sea. And where did you birth? My is on the May the 23rd in 1922. And who were your parents? They were Olga and Reinhold Genrich. I met Helmut in Stoll. He came there when he was wounded and was staying in the hospital. And uh, that very first Sunday when he could walk, he went to the street. Stoll is uh, a city of about 50,000 population at that time. Today it has 200,000 with the Poles who have moved in. But and so he was uh, looking for a church and he asked someone where the next church was. And this gentleman belonged to our church and he said, well, I'm just going there, why don't you walk with me? And at that day we had a, a youth celebration and I was um, um, doing some poetry on the altar and so at the podium I should say I was not at the altar and Helmut fell in love with me the first day he saw me. Can you match? <laughs> what year was that? That was in 41 and we got married in September of 42. That's we celebrated our 44th anniversary in Muskogee. Yes. Uh, for six years for a newspaper. And, um, and then in 44, I was, was born. So I had to quit my job. And uh, then, but I was, was 10 months old when the Russians marched in into our hometown. And uh, you see, um, I had to be off a year anyway before I could go come back to work. The boss was already waiting, but we never made it. The machinery and the newspaper, everything was destroyed. And, uh, um, so what was, uh, when the war started in 39, until you got married, uh, what work did you do? I, I worked for the newspaper. For the newspaper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, uh, like I said, I worked there until um, 40, almost, uh, well, it was 44. Almost till giving birth to Iris, I was still active at the newspaper. They needed everybody since the men were all drafted. Um, I guess not to bring up old memories or I don't want to discuss things that may be unpleasant. But well, you just asked. I uh, tell you the truth. When you realize that the tide of the, tide of the war was changing. Yes. What were your feelings at this time? Well, we always thought we would be on the victory side. You know, that's what we believed till the last moment. Till Helmut came home in 44 Christmas, yep. we had Iris baptized. And it was the time he said, you know, they are already in Germany. Do you know the war will be over? Uh, the front was going a bit on the, on the Baltic Sea, and uh, uh, I have read books, as you know, uh, we had no idea how, how, wa how war was all possible. Né? You know, uh, when I saw the last week, the movie uh, here on, on TV, I was surprised. Uh, but, but we had no idea, nobody had an idea. But we we only did our job, you know. We weren't staying 
I have been staying in Russia for six or seven months, also for a long, long time, on one place when we have not moved back and forth. When Helmut came home Christmas 44, like I said, we had our daughter baptized, and he said, you know, if the war is going on like this, at Easter time we will be in Berlin. I said, no kidding. He said, well, we are already on the front of Germany facing Poland. He said, and they are in Germany right now. And then after Christmas it happened that the people from East Prussia and West Prussia came through. You know, we were on, on the route uh, Danzig, you know, on the map Danzig, Stolp, Stettin, Berlin, that was the main railroad. And those people were coming in either by trains or with their wagons from the farm loaded up, you probably know that. And Pomeranian was a good country with lots of food. We had a wheat country and uh, potato fields, and there was lots to eat. We have not suffered during the whole war. In fact, we had children coming from Berlin and bigger cities. They spent the time there to be fed up, like we said. And uh, they, we always had to eat. There was no problem. And we fed those um, uh, refugees there in Pomeranian. And uh, they were coming through all the time. You could see where the snow was, was just ice, where they had been rolling along with their wagons of people even on food. You know, they walked away only with a knapsack on their back. That was all they had to see. And we always gave them rooms and tried to take them in and feed them. We had many stations set up where they came through, gave them something hard to eat and to drink. And then on March the 7th and 45, they were starting to build a big uh, hole right in front of our house there. And the lieutenant came in and he said, we are setting up a, a pack here and you have to leave. And we said, well, where, where are we supposed to go? And uh, he said, and at that time, the loudspeaker cars went through town and they said that it had to be evacuated, that they were going to um, uh, destroy the bridges. Stolp, my hometown, was located on the Stolpe River, which mündet into the Baltic Sea. And that was Stolpmünde, if you know about that big yeah. resort. And so they said it has to be evacuated by the afternoon. Well, and mothers with children and old people, and I had a, a sick mother uh, on my hands too. And we would get ship cards. And so I told the lieutenant that we would be leaving or that we would go and try to get a ship card, you know, to, to get a ticket on, on the ship. The Wilhelm Gustloff yes. was leaving from Stockmünde and she sank. But anyway, I went there and I was standing there and waiting and waiting and the line did not move. And so finally I know that I had to feed my sick mother and the baby, so I knocked at the door and there wasn't anybody. The, the man there was sitting with his secretary on his lap playing around. He said, we do not have any cards anymore. They are all gone. And I said, why didn't you let us know? So I went back and uh, I had an uncle, he had a, a villa on on the wood. We lived in, at the wooden area. And uh, so and I said, if we have to leave, that's the only place we will go. So I brought my grandmother with a baby carriage out to hide and we, we knocked at her door, rang the doorbell and we waited. And outside was a jeep standing with a soldier. And we waited and waited. And then finally she opened the door and she said, uh, my uncle, you know, Uncle Helmut, he just sent this soldier to pick me up. And she had two little girls to, to be safe, that we got out of here. And she said, if you see guests coming to your house, you wouldn't leave. So God spoke to me and he said, that I should remain here in my house. So she said, come in. And my grandmother was her mother-in-law, and she let us in. And I said, I have to go back and pick my mother. 
So she took care of Iris and Gretma, and I went back and I had my mother, she could still walk, but she was very, very weak, but she came down the stairs and I got her on a sleigh and uh, it was snowy, I said it was really cold on the 7th of March. So I tied her in, in her feather bed that she was warm and with strings around that she was at least warm. And by the way, it was my folks uh, anniversary. They, should, they got married on the 7th of March in 21. I was born in 22 and they got married in 21. And so she said, well, this wedding anniversary I will never forget, <laughs> she said. So I pulled her to the Stolpe River and there were the German soldiers and they said, well, what are you doing? And I said, I want to go out to the wood. We called it the Wild, wild Kader. We had on the other side, on the east side of town, we had the Wild Katze. So it would be cat and, um, and, and what is the male cat. You know, this was where my aunt lived on the male cat side, you know. And uh, so, but anyway, the soldiers helped me pull mother over the bridge and they were preparing to destroy that bridge. And we were maybe uh, a half a mile away and then we heard this terrible noise. It was blown up, that beautiful bridge was named after Hindenburg, was just newly um, um, restored, you know. It, it was a beautiful bridge over the Stolper River and it went to pieces. Where my mother passed away, she didn't survive. That's a long story of how we had to bury her because everybody was put into mass graves. And she knew she was dying and she said, don't let me be put in a mass grave. She said, put at least a paper bag over my head. I do not want any dirt. But she was so particular. But and she got her wish. We got a casket for her. Helmut never smoked. Drink, so we gave all that what we had stored on cigarettes and, and so we gave to this man he was making caskets and he had some there they had not been painted so we painted it and she got her wish that she was buried alone but we had to dig her own grave but anyway everything went well and my grandmother who was already 60 at that 80 at that time she said I will go and check up how our houses, because during the night we could see how the whole town was red. They had, because the Russians were mad that the bridge was destroyed, they burned the whole town. There wasn't anybody in it, just the, the whole town, the center. But we were living in a modern uh, street, Helmut and I, where we had our apartment was newly built, was on the outside of town. So grandmother said, let's, let's go in and see. And there has never been a shot fired in that hole where they had, but the gun was removed, you know, they had a machine gun in it set up, and the cannon, everything was removed, and our apartment was still there. It was plundered, but we, we found things to live in. And uh, so she came back the next day and she said, let's go back, move back into our, our house. It is still there. So this time I had to push Iris and uh, the, we didn't need the sleigh. The snow had melted and we moved back into our house. And that is where Helmut still found us. But then the Poles, after the war, after the Potsdam Conference, the 25th of May, and in 1945, um, the Poles took over the government of our town. And uh, so they made us um, move just into one room. We had a very nice Pole. We didn't have a wife. He was waiting on his wife to, to get from Russia. And uh, so and he was very good to us. So he let us work in the kitchen and cook and do things. And, but I had to clean just the the house for him. And at that time Helmut came back. No. Again it was a year later 
he had been there in 44 Christmas and this time he made it Christmas 45 and we had a wonderful Christmas. We didn't have a gift or anything but he was the greatest gift we could ever receive. Iris called him Helmut because we had been talking, my grandmother and I, we had been talking about Helmut when he will come home. We never said to her, you're dead or so. We thought we would never see him again. And so when he came that morning, we had a curfew, we probably told you. Uh, by 10 o'clock we had to be in and we couldn't be out before 8 o'clock in the morning. So when he arrived at the railroad station, it was 6 o'clock and they kept him in until 8. And so he walked into our house and he saw the, the Polish flag hanging out of our apartment. And uh, he saw that that's impossible, Ruth does not live here anymore. And he asked the, the neighbor lady, uh, and she said, oh yes, they still live in their apartment. And so he walked up the stairs and uh, he uh, rang the doorbell. And my grandmother, she would answer because the Russians would come in. And we were scared, we young women. And so Iris got up in her bed and she said, Helmut, it's Helmut, mother, it's Helmut. And she was more excited to go <laughs> she probably could not remember, you know, him, and she called him Helmut for a year, I guess. She couldn't get used to calling him party. So, but that was our reunion we had. And you say, when the Russian soldiers, hmm? when the Russian soldiers marched into the camp? They marched in on the 7th of March in 45. And when the Poles came in... They the came Russians, in after the Potsdam Conference in the end of May in 45 also. Did, did the Russians leave then? No, 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 it was still occupied. They, they were the bosses around. They still were not there then. Yeah, and Helmut worked... And I came back. Yeah, Helmut but worked in the Russian bread factory. The, uh, the, the Russians, they were aber completely circled in. Yeah, later on the... They occupied Kremis. one part of the town and called it the Kreml. Right. And uh, that were only Russians. There was nobody else there. Now the other people were working, working for the Russians. For them. Like I on, so they would take me in, in this Kreml, and oh, the Polish not let him. Mm -hmm. This is a, a work, a really, uh, sometime I, uh, then later on I get from a, from a, Minister from our church, a, a coat like a loading coat, you know, on the head. So when I was going shopping, I was going like a priest. He looked like a and when I came in the, in the horse, uh, the horse meat shop, ne? <laughs> da, they give me everything for <laughs> what I want. I showed on in I could not spin, uh, I couldn't on here. A little, 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 little bit. Uh, no, uh, Polish. That's why you're Polish. Uh, then. Uh, now you see, uh, this is what you have here in East Germany too now. In East Germany uh, you see only noch a few Russians uh, between, the, between the, the Germans. Yeah, yeah. this is the uh, same all. But when, when you really will, will like to come in contact, ne, you never know, they come yeah, <laughs> like when I was the last time in we were going over the borderline to Berlin, eh? so as you know, you weren't there. Oh yeah, you know over there. So, uh, you yeah, always have to be very be careful. I don't like to be involved in anything. Uh, let me ask, whenever you realized the tide was changing, that Germany may lose the war, what was your reaction? Oh, this was a, this was a time, you know, I don't know how I can 
say to you this. You know, uh, we always want staying to this, what, what our, our promise, our, to fight this to the last minute. So uh, uh, I could not, uh, when, when, uh, even when they catched me. Eh? And uh, no short time before they catched me, uh, there came a group from, from, west, from the west side. And we come here from the east. Eh? And they came right to us and they said, oh, uh, the Americans come and help us. That's what they said to us. And so we had still hope ne, that the Americans came and helped us. And I'm, I'm, and I'm sure uh, when I was in Berlin noch, uh, on my birthday, on the 15th of February, I was noch in Berlin and visited the uncle of my wife and I picked up stuff, uh, the papers for stuff that we needed for our tanks. And when I came down to the headquarter and saw all the empty offices, I know it was more close to the end. Yeah. Well, what do you want to do? You see, uh, I had to go back to my crew and bring him the batteries to turn our tank, uh, panda towers. You know, the panda tower, the panda wire built in and on the ground around Frankfurt and uh, we only had the head with us. Tomorrow? Tomorrow the day All right. All right. Yeah and uh, we are, we still had uh, and then when, when I arrived in Frankfurt with my staff he said oh we already lost the east side. Uh, so so we are, in the night we are moved them back and we weren't going with everything backwards and backwards this south in Berlin was the end. Would you give me your thoughts on Hitler? What do you think of Hitler? We're not saying much. Although you see, uh, <laughs> but... To know if, if I would answer that the Germans were fanatics I tell you that they believed everything he said. And uh, we, I was working at the paper, and you know, we got our front pages mailed. They came from Berlin direct, and we received them from Stettin, which is, well, you can show it on the map perhaps, or not. Yeah, um, I, have the... uh, I have the maps at home. And we got the politics written. You know, nobody from our paper could write the, the politics. You see, everything. When the Russians marched in, I was listening to the radio, and it said that heavy Panther companies were thrown away from Stolp, and they said between Stolp and Kolberg. And the Russian was, they were already occupying our town. You see, why did they lie to us? I will never forget that. But anyway, the politics were written in Berlin, and we received them from Stettin, which was the next big town. And so all we had to do is, they were on mats, and all we had to do was rolling on, on the paper. That were the reports from the war, and so on. That has all been lies, because the Nobody can came change anything. We ne? couldn't change it. No. That's, that's why you're all... Uh... We heard from the soldiers here last week that they on Hitler's birthday on the 20th of April in 45, close to the end of war, they were asked to write birthday cards for Hitler. So they were writing, mein lieber Führer, wir gratulieren zu deinem Geburtstag. They made them write it. And they said all and that American who had to carry the bag under his arm, he had a big one, he said, the Germans are crazy, the Germans are crazy. <laughs> you know, why did they make them here in America write those? But it was four weeks before he shot himself, you know, he got mail here from America. So I think the whole world was crazy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's work. 
that yeah. is that is what uh, uh, a Louis Louis Kronawater mm -hmm. told us. He was in that company, you know, that they made them write this happy birthday cards to others. You know, uh, and uh, we didn't even know that when the war was finished, that Hitler was dead. You know, they only told us, you know, uh, you are the losers. The war is finished. And so that is why we Poles come in. Nobody had notified us. We didn't even hear the truth. After 46, when we came to Western Germany, we were informed of everything that had been going on. The Poles didn't have a paper, you know? No, they no, 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 no. We, no, you know, we uh, didn't. You know, there was no radio anymore. No, no we, we didn't have, have the radio. On, no, you know, uh, uh, so many things. Uh, where what they give out on, yeah. on the reports. Ne? This was only under censure, and this is what they served the people. I tell you a little joke. For our wedding, we had got a bust of Adolf Hitler as, as a wedding present from someone. And uh, when we came in, like I said, we, after a few days of hiding, we came back into our apartment, and I walked in, and there was Hitler standing the us. So I opened the window and I talked to him and I said, that's all we have to thank you for, all this mess you got us in. And I opened the window and saw him out, you know, just the window, I didn't care. And then the next day I was going downstairs to bring the trash out, you know, and I opened the cellar door and come out and there he was standing perfect, <laughs> upright. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, but anyway I picked him up and threw him into the uh, trash can. can, you know. Yeah, you see. Well, you see, he was indestructible. He had to shoot himself. <laughs> no. uh, At that you know, time, on June 44, it was when they had the attentat, you know, of Hitler. And uh, so uh, we were kind of creepy when we heard that. We said, well, what would have happened to us? The war was on. What if they had gotten him? I think it would have changed the whole program. Yeah, or you see, uh, there weren't you so many involved in these uh, things. Uh, all the, the officers, they uh, did all not the, want you to see, go. All the army, ne? the army was uh, still not different like uh, all the party. Then you know, the army was, I was outside in Russia, under Manstein. Ne? And uh, this was, and I think today, after I have read a lot of books, also, even in English and in German. Ne? The Operation Barbarossa. Yeah, the, uh, this is, and I have seen shows on TV. Uh, you see, show, she, uh, the shows on TV I not believe anymore. And this is uh, a big lie what they show sometimes. And I, know, I have seen how they do it. Ne? So, uh, like uh, the Operation Barbarossa, you see, uh, this is something what they have done now uh, with uh, the. the they need only one picture to make something like this. Yeah. And this is all. But you know, uh, the, the real things look different. Yeah. And uh, I saw only one real thing, and this was when, when the Russians went ran over us, yeah. and they uh, could not come to. Yeah. He had too much manpower, but we not had. We had only two machine guns, ne? and with two machine guns, you hold the whole brig. That's why. That's that's why. And uh, you know, uh, this one, the uh, the new 42 machine guns. I saw in. They had one in. In the 45th division. You know, I, then I know when we get them. This this one really thinks about. You can have trouble. They were very dangerous, a little bit dirty, you know, and then they were not to use. When my father was, was in the war, yeah. he was. and he said Germany had so many chances to win that war. Yeah, he but if Hitler would have listened to his general, he said that it could have been different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we, 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 had, we had the man. As a, you we know, we saw 
was it in the beginning of this week they had the wings of war, yeah. Yeah. you know, and there they said that it happened in Pearl Harbor and they shipped the weapons to the Russians and here they were defenseless, you know. So I guess it was the same with us, we had too many ones to take care of and we didn't have any help. Yeah, my father said the first big mistake Hitler made is we didn't invade England, you know, France. Yes, yes, France yeah. and, and England. England. And then if Hitler had taken England, that was the war. Yeah. The war was over. Because at that time, I mean, I yeah. was in Germany, it was England. Uh, but he opened up the Russian front. Yes, yeah. and that was. Oh. And we were not prepared for the cold winter. Our no, you see, uh, this is, this this is what, what you saw uh, when they showed uh, when Russia was going against Finland and Norway, yeah. also in 1800 yeah. or in this war. Yeah. The, the Napoleon had already the trouble. Uh, nobody is prepared for a winter like what you have in Russia. And, uh, when, they want, when somebody wants to go against Russia, that's the only way in the summertime and then in hurry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> were you ever sent to Russia? I was, uh, I yeah. was in Russia. Uh, Were you there in the winter time? No, only in the summertime. <laughs> I'm lucky. Yeah. I came in spring out and then, wie I say, I was under Mannstein. Yeah. And Mannstein was a, a, a general from different shape. We had to count our ammunition. We had to bring every day a report how much, how much we still have and what guns we have. Also, you know, there was so much paperwork. And, uh, this, this is what, what I said. lost my brother in starting and He's missed. Yeah. So we never heard from him. You know, uh, the, we had a Sherman book, no? This was in Stalingrad. Yes. We yes. had the Sherman book in Stalingrad. When you saw this, uh, the, uh, was this the history from there. Well, they were surrounded. They were in the kettle. Mm -hmm. That was the last message we got from here. You see, that this was uh, we were all What everybody learned, you know. When you can build a kettle and uh, you close the kettle more and more, this is by Danzig, that's in, in Ost, uh, East Russia, uh, Lettland, all this, uh, all this, uh, is, this is uh, what, what's happened. You cannot uh, escape uh, as, as a kettle. Uh, and when uh, and this one, the, the Russian generals, you know, in the beginning, when I saw, uh, like the, the movie with this, when I saw this uh, barret in Moscow, I never have seen a Russian soldier with a bicycle. The Russian soldier couldn't even not ride, a, even no. the officer couldn't not ride a bicycle. Well, we and see. they showed the barret with the hull. Oh, Two big were holding the bike so that one could ride, ride on it. How, that's how silly. And then they showed in, in this movie, uh, this is a picture made for. Ne? Also, uh, you know, that's in other things. Or uh, when you see what they had for tanks, yeah. there, there were nothing. But the manpower they had. Yes. Yeah. The manpower. Also, so many people he couldn't put in. That's, uh, and when, when they came through, yeah. then there was no right. Yeah. Well, I am not a general. I was only a soldier like the littlest one in the whole man. Now, Abi, you know, uh, I hope you understand right. We, I am not for the war. I like freedom. Abi, you know, you see it's like in Afghanistan today. You see it's in Libya yeah. today. And you not know what, what is the more. No, and uh, so uh, the world is repeating. Yeah.
we at least always had our beliefs and uh, sometimes it was fun but we believed that God would help us and we prayed and, and really things changed. Oh yeah, we have, I think we have, when, when we have prayed, eh, obviously uh, this was yeah also in the German army not anymore. Also, she not believed in prayers or like this. This was different. And, uh, I will, you know, and when you really were a Christian and you prayed, uh, then you know that I am still, today I am still here. I think it's good. And that's our life is what going this way. I always say it was as well. Yeah. Everything that Came to us. Uh, everything uh, we, uh, we took us uh, God's hand, uh, even when that we came here to the United States. One uh, old lady gave us not on the way to go here to the United States when we yeah. said my goodbye to that. Uh, she was an old friend of my mother's, so she said, well, you cannot go wrong when you go to America. They have helped so many other people, and, and God knows, and bless them always. What she said. So? That was old German woman. Yeah. Also, no, as an old time. She uh, survived already from the First World War. Right? Yeah. So, then, uh, you know, we always can learn a lot from our old people. Obviously, it's on our young people today. Right? But it's what she do. And over there is it real. Well. Now, how? Ready for another cup of coffee and perhaps some refreshments? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. It's your job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The, the theater, also the Oberhaus, mm -hmm. ne? and the Oberhaus is made like a war, and I have pictures uh, in another book. Ne? Yeah. So uh, uh, this corner, mm, yeah.
this corner, what you see here, yeah. this is about in this area here. Uh, when this is all new now. Yeah. The, uh, Dresden uh, war, uh, this is, when, when, when I think, so you let the running this? Huh? No. <laughs> no, I will not give, give yeah. you uh, information to you. You know, uh, from what I think, uh, uh, this was the worst thing what you can do to the, to the people. There was no military in Dresden? No, no military. No. Uh, but there were the refugees from the east. They were on, on the tracks. What for about this key communication center? It says here that they knocked out. That's what they were after. And it was just wasn't there? They just no. said ah, it was there? Oh, no. Ach, there was nothing. See, uh, Dresden was ja an old city. And I can only think uh, that she has destroyed this big city. Uh, to push the people down that he lost his mind. Uh, people, but, you know, and now they have a rebuild. No, Dresden was famous for the ceramics they made. Dresden China's was yeah, famous yeah, all over the world. Yeah, yeah, you see, yeah. You can see many things, but we have here from Dresden China. This is how they have built this back now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where they make Zeiss and Kohn. Have you heard from Zeiss and Kohn? The Zeiss and Kohn is in where you make the, uh, the pinacle, uh, pinacle, the glasses. Huh? Binoculars. Yeah, binoculars and everything is Tyson Cohen. This is a world company. We want, they are much better than the Japanese. Yeah? But the Japanese, see, make a sheep. But they have, see, had not so the people so, yeah? mm -hmm. yeah. What was Dresden firebombed? What was. It was in February. Um, you, have, you have a book already. Yeah, I have a book. It's worth, it's worth. Mm. February the 13th, I guess, in yeah. Yeah. 40. Yeah. Mm. You can read this in English. Yeah. yeah. The, um, this mm. David Irwin is, is a writer. Yeah. From, from I think the it was in, in, the, okay. in the bag I put here. You know, it is interesting how she did it. Mm -hmm. There was a football field, and that they had flecked out. The first bombers came and they flecked this out where they had to put the bombs in. Yeah. And they, have, they bombed this for night. This is all here in this book. Yeah, it has the town even. Yeah. You know, uh, we had, uh, we met uh, a girl in uh, Arkansas City and uh, she's married to an Indian here in Oklahoma. But anyway, 
uh, her faults come from there. And uh, she was there during this Holocaust night. And he lost his wife in the fire, and all he could do was uh, on her. She had some metal buttons on her coat, and that was all he could identify her with. You know, they wanted to, I've heard that they wanted to try the people that led the raid on Dresden, that organized it as war criminals. They said there was, there was no piece of that. They flew in from England and they came over our town and they did never harm us. They flew right over to, to Dresden. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it, it was pinpoint at that town. And why, I don't understand, because it was full of refugees who had come even from East Prussia and from Silesia. Yeah. They were all crumbled together. Every family had to take somebody in so that they had uh, a roof over their head. And uh, just uh, that it happened at that time. But then you see it this way. It is beautifully rebuilt. Helmut has some pictures yeah, there. Yeah. And it's better than ever, you know. So maybe it was God's yeah. will. What do you we know about it? This this was all gone, ne? Mm -hmm. When so looked now. This church tower is is this church tower, ne? This is the here. Yeah. And the end for this what what this this here and, and the Like this church they have never built back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is a uh, um, the Church of the Lady, I have it. Yeah, yeah, it's, I have it's it about there. there. Yeah. And when we were there visiting it, and uh, all they had was the, the top which had tumbled down and was standing in front of the ruin. Uh, uh, this is this, um, uh, this was what the built first back, the square here. Uh, yeah. uh, what you that's see, the it, uh, that's the twinger. Yeah. And that, uh, see, uh, it was I have one church, you know, was completely uh, leveled. And uh, what was not heard was the study of Martin Luther. You know, it was he was standing there with a the Bible in his arm, like nothing happened around him. You know, so it's sometimes. Yeah, I, you know, it's in, it does in so many things. Well, I think um, that must be. Uh, you have one destroyed the town to build this back in a new shape. Yeah. But you see, the Russians had taken everything out of the museum. All of those oil paintings and uh, uh, the, the china, you know, and uh, the silver, and everything that was there in the museum they had brought to Russia. And they had to return it. I don't understand that. And then now it is uh, again in, in the rebuilt museum. Good. At, at least it was saved. Yes, yes. Yeah. new one, yes, Joe? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I read something from you. Uh, yeah, you I told you, that was the very same day we had uh, yeah. um, yeah. Doctor, Doctor Pop Yes, that's behind the door. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. So, is it better? Yes. Some potatoes or to get the sponge to start fermenting? No. No, you see, uh, the sponge you, you have to make everything. You ordered the ready sour. Uh, the, you mean sponge. the sour dough or the, you mean the sponge? The sponge, how you originally, you have to, you how you started it originally. Because oh. you have to feed it every day, but somehow you have to start it in the beginning. No, I, I get my starter from Erex, a company yes. in Germany, Germany, in Nuremberg. You see, uh, Erex is a company uh, in Germany. For fertig sour. For yes. fertig sour. Also, they come in, in a little and package. And they flew it out here in, in a little package. Came by airmail. Came by airmail. And uh, you started this then for six hours. And uh, after six hours, you let us work. For, and my, my, my sour starter is still the same 
like 36 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you are, and when uh, you like to keep him for longer time, also when we are one going sometime uh, in, vacation. in vacation, also like when we go to Germany, we need about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you make in a glass, uh, in a glass jar, yeah, make it very stiff, when th uh, then you can uh, keep it in the keep it in the refrigerator, but not freeze it. No, no. Uh, this is the, the power. Mm -hmm. huh. This is what 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 you lose. Then. But it stays alive in the refrigerator oh for yes. six weeks. Mm -hmm. Oh, for for a long time. Mm -hmm. You see, on uh, this company in Germany, I c I know already since 1931. Uh, 1931 came. Uh, a fatty sour out. So he came a like a powder, like what you have powder. here, mm -hmm. ready powder. Like an Our he, he is, is treated like uh, like what you have with dry yeast. Yeah. The dry yeast is uh, the same things now, uh, but not as good. Uh, but it's not not so healthy like a, a, a fatty sour out the natural uh -huh. treat. Uh, this is what, what you cannot do. We had our, uh, when the Irene's Bakery closed down, they, it went into a bankruptcy thing. Uh, Ingrid started her bakery right away with, with Jack Siegel, the baker there. Mm -hmm. He didn't have anything to do with it. It was in bankruptcy court and he couldn't get in there. He wanted to go back in and, and work again, but it was tied up in court. Yeah. Uh, he tried everything with the court and everything to try and get in there and get some of his funds so that he could keep he it didn't alive. Let him in? They would not let him in. They would not let anything be taken out because it was all tied up in court. Yes. And he ended up starting another one himself at home mm -hmm. and kept that is it. Not, that you cannot do it. Well, that's no, how he it's he not did. Not the real thing. With no. cooking you potatoes. Know, I, I had a man. I had a man here in town. He came to me one time Boy. and he <laughs> brought me. Uh, he said, Helmut. Smell it. It's smell it. Smell oh, why do you? Ooh, uh, rotten, uh, rotten. rotten. <laughs> you know. And he had started it with bread and potatoes. He said, you know, and and, yeah. and milk. Yeah, and like vinegar it's like we have sometimes in a newspaper. Yes. Uh, when she wouldn't make a fatty sour. Well, uh, and said, sour. I wouldn't try. Uh, it. Uh, I would not <laughs> use it. Then this is not. Uh, you know, uh, you have to have a natural. Stalin. And the start is new this way. Because it's a natural bacteria. Yeah. It's a fresh yeast. We yeah, I don't know. It but is you know. actually it is B12, what the elderly people get to know that, that it's that natural bacteria. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, this is yeah, what you have with yeast. Uh, yeast is, yeah, uh, is a bacteria, then you have to, uh, when you be uh, a chemiker. Eh? This is what we have learned. In, in our bakery school. Ne? Maybe she have here new ideas, ne? but I cannot uh, compete with this one. But it's really it's the brewery yeast, you know, where they do uh, the, the beer with too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, uh, but the most of the time... But why the yeast? You know, we use the Red Star yeast. Mm -hmm. We have done that from in the beginning, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the yeast. Uh, Red Star, uh, comes from uh, Milwaukee, ne? and this is uh, connected with the brewery. Ne? The, this is what, uh, what uh, where you get the bacteria. Ne? So you're saying that since the yeast is a bacteria, then your sponge should also be the same so kind. Same of thing. So you can see how it pours, you know, how it uh, grows. Uh, when uh, she showed us this on pictures, ne? how it did a uh, <coughs> little figures uh, grow, ne? Grow and divide. Ne? Grow and, and, and yes. grow and divide. This is how, how, how the it is. Cells, you know, the cells, you know, dividing. Yes. That's the natural mm, fermentation act. Well, I know we went, we had many arguments with Jack about, uh, Ingrid had a man come from, uh, that learned to bake in Austria. Uh, his name was Franz, and he was working in Canada. And he came down to uh, show us some of the breads and stuff like 
that he was making, mm -hmm. and he could not understand why we were making this old-fashioned sponge. That that was old-fashioned. Yeah, I'm no, supposed to do it that, that way. This is the same thing, but but, but the Helmut. Last the time in Las Vegas, we were there to an international meeting, and, and uh, so Helmut asked some question. He said, "Are you using our um, how does he call it? This instant yeast?" Or? And Helmut said, "No, I'm still working with fresh yeast." And he said, "Well, you are out outdated." You know, just he pushed the want no. anything to do with you with when with you go, go the old fashion yes. way. No. The old fashion is about the, the, the natural one yes. uh, and the healthy one. You know, you cannot uh, uh, compare with anybody. You know, and, uh, so when of they come. We are old fashioned, so we are. Yeah, and I not say, <laughs> like when you have, mm. like, they have all the donut mixes. Yeah. You, you cannot make a donut out this donut mix like when you make us out from the scratch. Yeah. And this is, the, but, but nobody can do it. Yeah. When, when you go in the factory, yeah, uh, they will not uh, handle you uh, why we are too small. Also, we are, but our, what will you do with uh, thousands of donuts when you uh, yeah. cannot sell it? They say in a minute you, you can make 2,000 donuts, why don't you invest in other machines and you don't have to work so hard, you can make 2,000 donuts. Oh, what then uh, what Nobody buys them here, you know, we couldn't exist if we were producing 2,000 donuts, we couldn't get rid of them. Mm -hmm. No, and well it's the same on. like when you make bread. Yeah? Uh, I make only so many loaf bread like I can sell. But when I, I not can sell it, what shall I do with this stuff? Oklahoma yeah. City is a larger place to be in, you know, you can get rid of more than what we do here in a small town. We make a lot of varieties of bread, and, and we try to make uh, our bread to last for three days. And lot, because we have so many varieties, uh, we make millet bread, soybean bread, high fiber, yeah. light rye, dark rye many varieties yes, of rye, yes. and because there's so many, we try to offset each day. We'll make some one day, some the next day, some yes. the next day, and, and mm -hmm. offset them so that at all times we do have each loaf of bread, and it is as fresh as possible yes. within three days. Mm -hmm. After three days, we take and, uh, and discount it and, and sell it yeah. in, in a, the rack as a discount bread. But you see, um, yours is like ours. It doesn't have to be shelf proof. It moves fast, you know. And uh, that is yours, but what if we would make a, a hundred loaf of bread a day of one kind and nobody would buy it? You have another people no. for. When the people is like this, uh, like when you go in the grocery store, you pick up what, uh, what is handy. Mm -hmm. I was seeing not as is it fresh, like when they come in your place. They it is fresh, you know that. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even ask if it's fresh anymore. Well, they want to know if it was baked today. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ingrid's no, no. always got, yeah, it's fresh. Even though it's three days old, it's fresh. But now they don't ask that. They say, was it baked, baked today? today. <laughs> no, it the donuts it. come in, the helmet brings a tray in, they are still warm. And they said, oh, are they yeah, baked today? <laughs> are they hot? Are the donuts baked yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> no, they're fried. Silly, you know. <laughs> you get the right answer. <laughs> cooked something. Why, have, why did you wind up in New York? Yeah, uh, we can, this is what I don't tell you. So I better right. should, should get my, my album. You know, uh, when, uh, when we arrived in New York uh, mit, uh, mit a big steamer, also mit a platchford, uh, they give me an envelope with uh, twenty-five dollar and an uh, address to Bonga City, and uh, we had a map from Germany of the Atlas, and uh, that was in Oklahoma City, but no Bonga City. So we uh, had a uh, in. Uh, and then we had to go to the railroad station, also they bought us with the bus from uh, in New York. We came uh, then uh, to the railroad station and uh, the train bought us to uh, Chicago. And in Chicago there were girls from the Red Cross and they bought us to the train to uh, 
Bonga City. Da war noch still der Train, ist nicht anymore. We don't have train connection here anymore. So, and in Newkirk, da stopped already the train and the, the colored man said, uh, no, this is not the place for you where you come out. Noch one more. Ne? Also, we are one going to Bonga City. In Bonga City, I have no idea if somebody is on the railroad station, on the, on the, on the envelope or on to the railroad station master from Bonga City. Uh, and, uh, and there was a group from the Presbyterian Church and she brought us, she picked us up. There were uh, two men, she couldn't speak German and uh, she uh, said, okay, this is now your ten, uh, place where you be for one year also in contract. The church was service and the, the, he had a, provided us for one year to work in house bakery and uh, but I had no idea that uh, this bakery was for sale and uh, this was and uh, you know the one there was at the time there was a mission baker coming here in this area he was driving the bread around and everything so here uh, this was, he this was when we applied in 51 and then 52 we he came was then, uh, to this country. It was, so he would it go was out of business. The we were brought with the train and direct more. to the so he was fixing to go out of business yeah. because yeah. Yeah. we came with his no, and anyway, general lecture. And, uh, hmm. Uh, one from the beggars, yeah. although he had not six more beggars, uh, American boys, ne? and uh, he, uh, he said, okay, uh, I want to show you, like to have a bakery by your own, mm. oh, this, uh, but I will tell you, so I uh, said, you know, I have no money to buy. And what you can do, if you could not bring money here yeah, as a refugee. <laughs> yeah, I want to wait. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I had talked to the and the said, uh, oh, I have an baby. assistant over oh, here, he can do me to there. Maybe you, uh, so you find see the building a place for you then. A preacher without a pulpit and a baker without a bakery. That's not work. So, this was the way, and sometimes, and we still as living I went, in the house, I the contract and, and, and we rented it to someone then, and moved upstairs, uh, and we moved the, uh, in. He in came in first Christmas. in, then he was skeptic, and in, 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 in of this in one March, donut, or what I would March. bake. <laughs> he came in and bought one donut, and then he came back and bought a dozen. Yeah, so they had, had to try it first. Yeah, they had to try it first. Ne. But I could not give was anything it away then. In you see, I could not take the so I need to give away. No samples. No samples. Couldn't that afford it. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I had a small place in the we time. Had the big, we was on north end of town. Was this the that same place that you I had? No. Because no. uh, this was... In that was on north end of town, 110 North Main. And then, so we, on the 1st of April, we wanted to move, and there was a furniture store in it below, and they had the explosion and they had the fire, and we living upstairs, we lost everything. <coughs> we, we had insurance, and we not. Nobody told us, you know, that you have to have an insurance, no? No, we had uh, you the business building, but not when we were living upstairs, and the, we were paying the bank for monthly for payments because a, a doctor used to live up there. And there was a nine room apartment, beautiful, with marble floor in the back and, and all, it was beautiful. And um, he <coughs> passed away and so his wife was selling the, the whole building. And so we got the lease from this furniture store people inside and we really were just taking it over and paying to the bank, but we had plans when they moved out on the 1st of April that we wanted to renovate it and then move the bakery in it. Now we lost everything. And we had to move back into the house. No, we had bought this house. Uh, we were living in an apartment. Yes, oh, and but, uh, but then we moved it. Then uh, but those pictures, you see, they were all given back to us. 
Anyway, Have you seen the pledge for it? In you? 50, yeah. yeah. In 57, uh, we. This is the inside. Yes. In 57, on January the 3rd, um, the first and second was a holiday, and on the third on Monday, we. So it's how big it is inside. So the church in Ponca City sponsored you? To yeah. Come to yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The first place to the uh, church. We came to the church for service. And um, the Presbyterian church had sponsored a job. Mm -hmm. And there was a 69er group, you know, the young couples, their ages added together had to be not more than 69. And we at that time, Helmut was 30, and no, you were 35, and I was 30. And those 65, we belonged to that group. And they yeah. had furnished the apartment for us. And, uh, and they had uh, not had to pay for the trip since we came through uh, the, with an army transporter. You the know, we, had, we had a free ride <laughs> coming to this mm -hmm. country. Yeah. This but like they had paid for the first month rent and they had everything prepared with towel and toilet paper and just perfect, ready for us to move in. And then and the next month we had to, to pay the rent and we were on our own. But they sponsored also a job for John House. Oh, well, I Baby earned only thirty-five dollars a week. Yes. How did? When did you first become a baker? When did you begin baking? Uh, baker, well, I said nineteen thirty-one. Why? Why a baker? What? Oh, a baker. Do you know, see, uh, when I left the school, where you only can do the month, as so you have to learn a job. Or you have uh, uh, going forward and to a high school, to higher, education. A higher education. And uh, so my folks said, you learn bigger. Yeah. So it was your parents that decided that you should... No, yeah. it was his, okay, his not mother had passed away and his father got remarried. And uh, she wanted yeah, uh, Elmo to be a cook on a ship. Yeah. Well, uh, that's in, it's one, well, three, three, three uh, officer, so he wanted, she wanted, perhaps, wanted to get rid of him. Yeah, uh, rid, not uh, rid, uh, this way, so uh, <laughs> to learn something to go in your life, <laughs> then you cannot stay home, yeah. eh? He didn't <laughs> have it easy, he was almost all malnutrition and very well. Was this in Dresden? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's where he learned his job. In, mm -hmm. uh, by Dresden, in Pirna. In Dresden I was born, but I am grown up in Brand Erbelsdorf by Freiberg. That is uh, all in Saxony. What you yeah. see, in Saxony is uh, on the northern side of Czechoslovakia, and, uh, and uh, so uh, I am grown up in a small town, ne? and uh, the big town was Freiberg. Freiberg is a big city. And is now smaller than our old time. Then uh, the everything has changed after the war. They find uranium in in the old silver mine, and so the town grew up again. How bad was the depression in the 1920s? Uh, now this, uh, later, the 24, uh, you could not get anything. The depression time was uh, like. It was, last, it was lasting longer than I was born in 22, and uh, when I was baptized a few days or weeks later, I don't know when it was, my grandfather gave my mother a substantial sum of money, and he said, you put it in both savings accounts, and so that for her education. And the next day when she went to the bank, she said it wasn't worth anything. It was on Monday, yes, this was on Sunday. And uh, so she went into a store and all she got was a little, um, how do you call those, the burp, <laughs> burp napkins you hang yeah, around. Yeah, that uh, was uh, all a she dip, had. Yeah. Yeah, she a dip, had yeah, a dip, yeah, a yeah. Yes, for that big sum of money, so it had lost the value overnight for the inflation. Yeah, this, this was going on till 
Oh. And that was 22. That's about 22, know. then it was 24. It was going on this uh, about 27 or 28. Uh, that's all our the earnings and so on, one were no work. Also, people were uh, uh, anti, um, uh, perhaps, uh, without like, work. No, without work. Nee. Mm -hmm. And my father lost his job. He was in a, in a factory as a workmaster, also this is like a manager in, in the, and uh, he lost his job too. Then nobody went by shares or the tables with fancy work on. So uh, this was the one time where we had the depression time. Uh, after the war we lost again, then everybody get on his so 45 it was in 1948, you have heard that uh, they devalued our money yeah. and we got a new uh, currency. And everybody started out with 40 mark. Everybody. So uh, Only when you had some business. She could not take away yeah, from you. You had your business building and you had your business everything, but uh, actually on uh, um, money you had only 40 mark to start with. That's 48. So we had that that's was 48, 48 after the so war. So we had 120 yeah, mark to live on. Uh, <laughs> when we came back home, also when we came back to Germany, uh, we are, also after the war, the, the currency was still, was still in, 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 in business. Yeah. Yeah. So you were drafted in 37. 37. Yeah. 37, right. So was Hitler... Was he in power at that time? Yeah. In yeah. Yes, he started in 33. Yeah. Were you all aware of, well, the, I guess, the rise of Hitler? Uh, what did you all think of Hitler? Was he good? Well, he was just vice counselor. You know, our uh, Bundes uh, president was uh, Hindenburg. von Hindenburg, Hindenburg Karl yes. von Hindenburg, and he was just uh, like you would have here um, a vice president. In West Berlin. You do not think very much of it, but we never thought that he would rise to power so fast. How did he rise to power? What? what did, how did well, he the party. Also he had the party. You know, the party uh, power. Also the, the party power, they were overwhelming. The when the people were looking for something, also the people were looking for a, a, a change uh, to to get something, also you know, his uh, ideas were not bad. Yeah. You know that he um, uh, opened uh, workplaces for people who had been after the depression without work and hungry, and so he built uh, like the autobahn, you know, the super highways and and the buildings and you know, uh, everybody you had work. He helped the the, the poor yeah. people. He yeah. helped the poor people. And the, the so get the, so get a little home. Yes. Ne, what was not possible, then she no had anything. But he built for, uh, especially that he built up families. Yeah, family with many children. They were given extra housing and, and jobs and uh, extra money from the government. And uh, really, Germany started to bloom. I was only 11 years. I didn't really realize what was going on. You know, but everybody was happy again that they had work and money and they could buy what they wanted, and, uh, and they had, had their housing, and uh, the, the education. Yes. Ne? Uh, people what were uh, good learning, also even uh, he not asked for people, also... Intellectual people, yeah. you know, students, they were already screened in school, you know, if they were good, they got a better education, free, the state would pay for it. And this was one thing. So everybody was for it. We didn't have any idea that it really started out to, uh, that he wanted to um, conquer the whole world. You know, that so he there was a wars. large pro Hitler movement in this country because he was you good. You think so? Yeah, he started out good. Yeah. And uh, in fact, we have photographs of the American German society back in the late 30s, the mm -hmm. photographs of Washington and Hitler. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, I, I saw pictures. Uh, was he make a lot of fun, like uh, yeah. the fun of him. Ne? Uh, but you see, the fun we never saw, uh, no. he not showed us. But, uh, you know, uh, what you have here... Uh, and they told us even the jokes that he would uh, 
uh, pay his chauffeur five dollar uh, five mark for each joke they told about him. You know, he, he was laughing and and uh, so. Yeah. Also, he was uh, really a man. He was like, a like everybody. Man. He was a little man. He was not a snack. What you call it? Snap. Snap. He, snub, he nee. came from a small family. Yeah. And uh, so he, he uh, was for the the people, for the little men. But uh, then I sometimes think he was wrong advice that it not all started in his own head. Yeah, and then, uh, he was going by the horoscope. Did you know that? Each morning they had to come in and read the horoscope to him and he would go after that. What was, when was he born? He, uh, he was born in, on the 20th of April in 1889. Oh, uh, yeah. oh uh, you know... Uh, I know that because my boss was born on the 21st of April and he would already start celebrating <laughs> on the 20th <laughs> and on the 21st he wouldn't come to work. <laughs> he was knocked out, so I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, uh, then he, for I mean, for a young man, ne, uh, was done. Oh, uh, you can't like. I uh, when you are beggar, ne, you had not the opportunity to buy a motorcycle, ne, or the, like what you have here sometimes in the high school kids. Ne, they have already cars. No, there was no way. Ne, the, then you for this money, what you earn this. Uh, I earned three years when I was learning my job. I not earned anything. He no, not paid me. Because but then came the, the time. Uh, it, it, uh, it then came the time that the the bread factories were growing up from the mill uh, from the mill companies. They had the big factories uh, where they uh, make the, the flour. While they had the flour and uh, nobody could buy the flour, so they make bread. And the people bought the sheep bread. So the baker had to look to go rid of his bread and then I was going with uh, with the handwagen in the afternoon when I was uh, so far through from door to door and sold bread. Oh, to the carnival, you know. Yeah, or so, uh, <laughs> so I, this was already... And he got two cents for each loaf of bread. And he gave me, after a long time, he, I said, I need my shoes and I need this and this. Or can I have a, a few uh, pennies? And uh, he uh, gave me even when the other boys from the bigger bakeries came to uh, school, she had cake and uh, went off one day, day old. Ne? Or she had a big package to eat. And I get on a oh, very, very hard moon, uh, the bubble sheet uh, cake. And uh, uh, I was all this feeling of man, I am pit. <laughs> so uh, this, this was the time. Uh, who I really was very much down now, and uh, so I make my four military training, then I earned it some money. She paid us, it was not much. Oh, well, you get something, and then you, you, when you were there in the four military training, uh, you could put your legs under, uh, there was a big sign, wer nicht arbeitet, soll auch nicht essen. Also, wer, wer not work, he is not supposed to eat. Eh? And this was a sign, and then, <laughs> the IC is not the day. We are not arbeit, so auch nicht essen. Now then, but now, also, okay, we have to work. Mm -hmm. And so we have worked in the morning, and uh, and Mellard Jones work, as you know, to add vessel. Uh, this was the farmers, the nobody irrigation had irrigation project. project. Uh, and in the afternoon, she trained us on uh, not on guns. No, she trained us with the spade. We were exercising. Yeah. But I don't tell you, the, the spade, you had to be uh, shiny, like uh, uh, that's polished, with, polished with, with, with toothpaste. <laughs> what did you take your military training? The military training in Saxony. Saxony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the military training. Wasn't that Großenheim? That's why the four military training I had in Großenheim. That's why I a factory built up with big rooms. Da we one uh, then. and then we had uh, the, uh, the uh, military training. I had in Carmen's uh, Saxony. Uh, this one uh, a big uh, camp place, uh, all new built. 
Uh, and uh, it's very, very interesting. It's one not very bad, uh, far away from uh, my father's military training in the First World was War. Was there too, you know? Yeah. Yes. He was, uh, uh, was there. And, and then uh, we never had the idea what the training came out. Eh? When in 1937 we were marched in to Czechoslovakia. No, well, it was 38. No, Czechoslovakia, it was 1937, uh, actually, the Danish eh? yeah, land. That, that's why you're only a chocolate uh, war. So uh, no, when we were marching. In 1936, uh, the Dayton land was, and uh, yes, and two years later was. Uh, no, next, the next year. 38. In 38, we marched into Czechoslovakia. That was a little uh, complicated. <laughs> yeah, we are, uh, first, the weather was not with us. Also, we are with the motorcycle. So it would be to. on the 16th of March, 50 years. Yeah. The invasion uh, yeah. of Czechoslovakia. Yeah. And, and you know, not uh, really, it was more bringing home, you know, the Sudetenland, yeah. which had been taken away after World War One. And when we are marched into Czechoslovakia, the, the weather was bad, snow like, like we had yesterday here, slick. And then we had to pass the big trucks, you know. Uh, there was the whole division. Also, with all, everything was moving overnight. Also, Monday morning, we have one uh, were prepared for the uh, war, also what you call war, ne? and uh, over the Czech, the Czech people, also the Czech army were not prepared for, uh, against us. This was different than with Poland. Yeah. What did you do in Czechoslovakia when you marched in? What were your duties? We, uh, uh, motorcycle rider, mm -hmm. the staff. You know, and uh, when, uh, when the motorcycle riders, they were then concentrated, to close the, the side streets, also the, the highways, that's, that's the, the f uh, big trucks and everything, the big cannons. Ne? Und Didn't we have side uh, cars? We had side or cars. Or ne? the officer? No, no some, uh, sometimes we had the side cars with the machine gun on too. Yeah. But you know, this was, we were, I was driving, we weren't driving right to, there were uh, only, uh, and the weather was bad. And we marched to Prague. And when we came in Prague, uh, Czechoslovakia was in, in not Germany. Yeah. That was interesting. Um, I don't know what year it was, but it uh, must have been the end of the 50s when President Reagan at that time, he was uh, uh, for working for this General Electric on TV. You know, he yes. was making all the commercials. And they had a film uh, marching into Czechoslovakia. No? Yeah, the one my picture. And uh, there we saw, we saw him. Wow. And uh, Isn't yes, that something? and he yeah. was yes there with uh, the motorcycle, and uh, those girls were bringing uh, flowers in. I don't so know where they had it. We wrote to them, um, and uh, for General Electric, and he sent us some pictures, and uh, from the motor blown up some parts of it. Yeah. Yes. I know uh, we our group. Was why we won a head and, and the marching group. Ne? You know, we won motor, motorized, but us were always going fast. Ne? It's, it's even uh, when then came Poland, ne? our motorized groups were going so fast. Ne? Uh, when we won already bis to the Weichsel River, ne? she called us back, we won so fast. We had to go back then. It's a halfway to Warsaw. Blitzkrieg. Yeah, that's, that's where you say Blitz, yeah. Blitzkrieg. Ne? And then we came down halfway to Warsaw, they said, uh, Warsaw is already uh, capital, uh, also capitaliered, also uh, had capitalized. And so we want, we are going back the whole corp to the Weichsel River, cross the Weichsel, what, uh, what I never will forget in my life. And, I, and the, East side from, from the Weichsel River, everything was burning. But it looked like when you have a picture show when everything's red. Ne? And in the night, they built a, a new bridge over the big river. The rivers in big there. Ne? And uh, we are uh, passed there and we were going this on the other end 
Und das war, wenn wir first time met the Russians. Die waren an der Bug River, das war ein Small River. Das ist in Polen? Das war Polen, the, the beginning von the war. Aber, you know, uh, the Polish people war, wäre, wäre, um, sie waren not thinking, dass the Sherman uh, came with everything, but, but sie konnten beat up. Ne? Yeah. Uh, denn uh, sie showed eben Bitches, dass wir had eine uh, paper match uh, Tanks. Ne? Ja, wir, wir waren trained an this paper match Tanks, aber the real one was there. <laughs> Where did you cross into Poland? What area? Uh, bei Schenstochau. Maybe uh, you heard uh, wo the book war lately. Uh, in uh, Schenstochau war die the home of the Black Madonna. The Black Madonna. And that, that was the place. We were already laying for two months there. Did you go anywhere near Lodz? Lodz, Poland? Lodz. Lodz. Uh, no, this Lodz is more north from there. Okay. I interviewed a man in Oklahoma City that was at Lodz. And uh, in Lodz, yeah. 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 No, we are um, how does he call you? Sister Kova, no? Yeah, Chen also wir sagten Chen Ja, aber hier, hier, Sister Kova. Sister Kova. Und dann, dazu, oh, I had a chance of man. The big city, that was a big castle. No, but no, no. This was, I had a chance of man. Okay, okay. No, but this was the first big city. We were staying there overnight in a big kettle, and uh, well then uh, we are, we are much bit nach uh, Lublin. Lublin was uh, then close to the borderline to, to Russia, and from there we uh, had uh, to stay on the Boot River, and there came the first time Russian officer, a general with his staff, and when they went leave, the battery was empty. <laughs> we had to push them out. <laughs> And, uh, you know, they had American tanks, Spähwagen, also this one, the, the uh, four-wheel drive, this was all American, with then a, a big, um, what is that, this guy here? Yeah. No. Mercedes? No, no, here, uh, no, nah. sometimes you, lo you lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one the uh, Cadillac, the big, with the big Cadillac yeah. coming, he came for, for an uh, old one, I was not in the modern one, I was just one the old one you see now, this was in 1930. 39. 39, yeah. Uh, how much resistance did the Pol Polish army put up? Was there much resistance in Poland? We, uh, the, the, uh, the Polish army? We were right on, on the borderline too, yeah. across from us. The, by the Russian, uh, the Polish army, ne? and uh, we came down in, in a very modern uh, camp place, also army uh, camp place, uh, brand new, also yeah, in Lubli, by Lubli. Resistance, resistance of the uh, abgebrochen army? No, oh, there were no fight. What about in Czechoslovakia? Was there any resistance in Czechoslovakia? No, uh, no only underground people sometimes. Underground, you know. Yeah. Uh, Where did you cross in Czechoslovakia? What area? Uh, by, uh, by Leitmaritz. Uh, the the Schöber line, this was a built uh, with bunkers, also with uh, concrete bunkers. Ne, with, but, uh, they, they were gone already before we were there. They left. Yeah. Now, were At you that time, there was not very much resistance, you know. There were not welcomed and you see even Hitler was working together with, with the Russian army when yeah. they went through Poland. Yeah, At that time they were still friendly with the Germans. Because invasion of Poland was Germany and Russia. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and from both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, the, the, we, we even not saw anybody also from, from, the, from the army. Were you there for the uh, the when Warsaw was destroyed? No, uh, you see, this one, uh, we were on the halfway. Helmut said he came to Lublin, and that is when he was wounded, and he came yeah. back. Oh, that's what that. Now, uh, you know, with Warsaw, uh, this was 
uh, when when Warsaw was completely destroyed, we never came there. We came too late. Uh, the walls are already. Uh, 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 you know, uh, she made uh, the Sherman very hard fighting, while she won uh, like uh, like partisans, also like uh, underground people. You, know. you said you were in tanks. Yeah. Uh, the, no, anti tank. Oh, anti tank. Anti -tank. Uh, we had yeah, the the open. Uh, the the uh, the open part uh, um, mit mit the Twitter in the back and uh, and open. Ne? Then we had ja uh, most of the time uh, six to twelve men mit a mit a uh, mit a big cannon. Ne? Yeah. And uh, the cannon was in the beginning we had only three comma seven the little one, and on the end we had eight. Ne? The the tank was growing up, so the munition had to grow up. And you said you were on the Eastern Front during the whole war? The whole war. All the time. What were the, some of the major battles that you, were, you took part in? By, by Stalino. That's what the major. Uh, when we had to leave. Were you a Stalingrad? Oh. No, Stalino. Stalino, uh, that's on, on the Black Sea. Uh, on the Black Sea. How far? Is that near Odessa? Yeah, in, yeah, in this area. Close. Very close. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a fight uh, so with the Russians uh, there. Uh, we even not know who wa who were who. She came in Sherman uniforms. <laughs> yeah? And uh, you only can see when she came over the hills, uh, that she won against us. And you know, uh, this was one thing. She even had not enough uh, guns. When one was killed, the front man had to take the gun from the, from the man he was killed. This is what she had. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, this line, uh, like, uh, we were on Shan for uh, about six months on one place in the Ukrainian. Yeah. Well, the line uh, for, for the donuts becken, what you call it, uh, the don becken, yeah, this was a long, long, a big stretch. And this looked like uh, when you go here out to, uh, to California, you not see anything. And we were laying down in in a little town, also uh, this uh, yeah. No, there was a little t a railroad station, ne, with a, a few courgeoses. Ne, courgeoses were the little towns. Ne, there was in only the farmhouses. The farmhouses not looking like a farmhouse here. Ne, there is when no floor. In, ne, the beds. No beds. There is a, a big square, and this is the oven, like a bakery oven. Yeah. And there, on this oven, they sleep. And there was the chimney in the center, and when these houses, one time, time, uh, burned down, or the shooting, or the, there were only not the chimney, and then this big place, this was left. Yeah. This is a house in Ukraine. I don't know if maybe she have now big, big houses. And where were you taken prisoner? Uh, Berlin. Oh, so you were taken prisoner at Berlin. In Berlin, uh, to, uh, or then we had to go back. Yeah. Tell me about from Stalino to Berlin. What what did you do? Oh oh no oh then I was wounded. Berlin, he was wounded. By Stalino, I was wounded. Came yeah. back. Okay. I came back with the train in in two steps. <laughs> <laughs> You know, first in French Stalino, when when I was wounded, this was on the fifth of September in the early 43. in forty three. Uh, when the Russian one between us, uh, one from my drivers, from this uh, uh, big anti tank stuff, yeah. so he he called, Oh no, the Russian are here. He said, Quiet. Eh? Also, Deutsch, ne? Also, yeah. well, this is only how you can understand, ne? Und die denken noch was. Und dann, uh, you know, for this uh, things, you use our uh, munition in to make light. You are shooting in a colored racket up, and this was staying for a while, and you can see what was going on. 
Und dann reden wir so, die Russen wollen mit Wieners. Aber in German Uniform. Nee. Und äh, dann aber ein Little House, right next to our äh, Trax. Und äh, da war eben noch ein äh, äh, nice Horse Car. Also es war äh, special like a Volkswagen for the officer. Nee. Und äh, der, da I und wenn I came, I get a shrapnel, came down, und I was feeling on the all blood. I thought my, my head is up, fall down. Yeah, and so, when I, I was going in this little house, und da war the doctor, mit his, uh, mit his staff und all, und he said, no, I cannot do here anything. You go in your car, und drive bis to the next place and this was a schoolhouse oh this was about oh over one hour, hour drive ne? and when we were on the way to there there was a driver and I won this car and there came the airplanes also little Russian uh, Jäger ne? so but didn't you have any red cross on your car? no no red cross <laughs> and we are jumped on the out in the side and uh, You know, da war nicht äh, für Red Cross, sie nicht kehr. Mhm. Ja, da war eine Welt. Na, und dann, äh, wir arrived, na, after a while, wir arrived, äh, he was shooting, so, as I was, no, no, no treffer. Ne? So, okay. wir waren, ja, so, wir waren drei. But Helmut still äh, has those shrapnels, all you can see in his uh, eye and ear. And, and here, this here, and the, so this was hanging. And all along his body, you know, you can always see those black spots. Ja, and uh, uh, when I came there, uh, there were more doctors and so, mm -hmm. he, uh, he gave me a hole. shot. And he, so, I was knocked out thing. for a while. Uh, and then uh, in later on, the, the Sanga, also the Red Cross wagon, picked up always four in one wagon. Yeah. An the, an the sketcher. And they brought us into Stalino on the railroad station. And then in the railroad station, they loaded us in the train. And from the train, we came to Neverbetrops. Neverbetrops is a big city on the Jebber. And there was a bridge. On, on the Jebber, you have and from there, there uh, was uh, war a bigger Schone, train. But Schoneburg, you know where you have this big accident oh, last yes, year yes, in yes, that area. Yes. Mm -hmm. Und dann in, äh, äh, wenn, bevor wir aber past the river, die Doktoren kamen zu und wenn, you know, so crazy we are war, äh, I, I thought I war a soldier, ne, I have to go in front line again, ne. So I said, oh, I cannot go back. Und he said, no, in your condition, you go home. So they were going with us, with the big uh, train. Uh, bis His hand is still covered. Uh, bis, uh, ca uh, cartoon. Uh, cartoon is where the headquarter of Göring was with his, with his staff. We had no idea, you know, everything was going on. Uh, uh, this was interesting. Cartoon was the town. And that was the headquarter for the Luftwaffe, you know, where they had the... Yeah, and Cartoon was the town where they found the big... Uh, Mass uh, graves for the, the Polish people yes. from the woods in Katyn. Uh, you know, in the time when you be there, you not know anything. Uh, there is also no connection in pay order or anything. What what is coming up? Uh, uh, we had very good maps. Also, and I had to still not meet me uh, when when I was going back. I, you can't see everything, but but we are where we were, what we did. Uh, this was uh, the army from Manstein. Uh, the, our general, uh, the, there were yeah, five sections. And, uh, there were Manstein, Manstein were not. Uh, uh, he was army, but he was not for Hitler. All those generals, you know, they did not work together yeah. with Hitler. No, Hitler like was ja auch not, he was ja only a little soldier. Mm -hmm. nee, 
He was uh, a corporal. Yes, he no. was a corporal. Uh, we all know in the corporal, this is the same like what you see out mit mit Waldheim, ne, mit, mit Hungarian or what in Yugoslavia. Ne. Uh, but but a little man like a li- lieutenant, ne, he had nothing to say. That's like in the army today. No, yeah. now I don't know how it's here. Well, you are a captain yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, you not know anything. <laughs> Uh, so you were taken prisoner at Berlin? Yeah. Uh, yeah, then, oh no, then came, uh, we, uh, uh, no, then I came home. Uh, let me see, you were first, uh, or last home, that was Christmas, before Christmas 44, no? Yeah. And then, uh, then he said, well, if that goes um, as fast as we are moving, the Russians will be, by Christmas time, they will be in Berlin. That is what he already was um, we, we are, you see, uh, we want seeing, you know. Uh, you know, this is why, uh, in many times, uh, maybe you have no idea of a Himmler. He took all the people, but were even noch traurig. Ne? So, uh, I was with one friend, then I, I was again with in, in the line, even with my wounding and with everything ne, that I not was. Full. Yeah, our, everybody. Everybody. And I get a job as a, a officer in the in the, the company uh, office as for everything like what uh, a job what used to be a stop spell we had to do. Yeah. And uh, so uh, when uh, we were in uh, by Hanover and we saw already the, the big bombers coming over and bomben of Hanover, the big city, uh, the uh, Frankfurt, Hanover, that is this area. Mm-hmm. And we were building up a new group with tanks. Our only, uh, we don't have the tanks anymore, we had only the heads from the tanks. The tower, what is all on the top, put the gun is in, and you can turn it. And this was loaded on a, on a train to go to Crowdens. Or we are not made this to Crowdens, then the Russian born already far, so we came only this Frankfurt Oder. And in Frankfurt Oder we had uh, five tanks on the east side from Frankfurt, and uh, Frankfurt Oder, not, uh, no, not, not east. Frankfurt, yeah. um, that's east, that's Silesia, no? Mm. Yeah, uh, also, and, uh, and da, uh, the, the Russian came from bis on the, on the east side from the river. And uh, there was... Uh, you know, Upper Silesia, that was already the place that had gone back to um, to Germany, had come back to Germany, and then it was lost again, and... Uh, oh, so and then um, it came a night. So it was and easier for the Russians to and get And we could not go uh, in, in action with our tank heads. They put no batteries to stop in the motor. So... I was not the, the night. Perhaps they didn't have any. No, we didn't have any with it. They loaded, no, no. They had it. I, I ran to, to Berlin, and while I was not in, in, the, in the office, ne, she gave me the order to go with the big, uh, uh, like what you have here, the, the schlepper, ne, so, and in the, in the schlepper tra- uh, trucks. Ne, and in this, we drove to Berlin, and I was in the headquarter. And there was nobody in the whole offices. I ran there, the big new office one staying there, were no people in. Already vacated. We were all gone. Now, and I can't, can't find not then, uh, where I could get my batteries, and they were in a, in a brickstone factory by Küstrin. In the night, we arrived Küstrin there, in, in, a, in a brickstone factory, and there were wo sie have drei die, 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 die Brickstones, da waren stehen die Batteries in line. Nu. So wir loaded our batteries und wir waren going to Frankfurt ne, und bought our stuff there. On the uh, two or three days night. You later. can see what a mess already. Nothing was organized anymore. Uh, three nights later, uh, we had to bake everything, uh, back everything in, in the trucks and in we had an, an trucks we had noch little horse wagon 
to put our stuff together and it was going west. And when we were on the, on the way of west, there came our drunken SS people. No. The, well, the Americans come and help us, the Americans come and help us. And uh, that's why when, when we can, in the next night, we are one in a little forest and we are one staying with our trucks and everything. And then the Russian came between us. And the felt we were staying and we had to put a hole in and then we were waiting but what you, is you, coming. you remember it was in June of 44 when they had the plot against to kill yes. Hitler. Do you know, and since that time he didn't put any trust in any general yeah. and they did not want to support him anymore, the others. Do you know, so everything was going down since June 44. Oh. Too bad that didn't work. Yeah, you see, uh, we had ja auch no idea uh, that the Americans still weren't coming. Then the patent wire, bis that I have found out that uh, one from the prisoners, from the American prisoners, were made by Risa. Uh, Risa is in the Elbe River. Well, I know this area very well. Yeah. Also, so, uh, this was the. What was his Kanun, name? He Kanun. is from Muskogee. Maybe you have met him. He was a prisoner of war in in Germany, Calhoun. Uh, she catched him by Risa. Yeah. When I, I don't know him. Yes, yeah. he yeah. comes to, to all the meetings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, and uh, this was interesting to hear this, ne, that he won already best to Risa. Ne. That is yeah, uh, in the line like Berlin. Ne. And uh, when the uh, Russian catched us ne, in the night, uh, early in the morning, what is when the uh, Russian uh, officer, also Feldwebel, ne, stehen vor mir mit dem Pistol, ne, you ring, we went to Ura, the ring, das war all right. And boots. Ne, no, that's the boots came later. The that's boots. usually what, what they wanted, the ring, the watches, They had the uh, alarm clocks on the arm hanging. Yes, they had already three or four, five wristwatches, you know, which they had taken off. Yeah. When you it first saw same to us, to us women, you know, they would tear off those necklaces and the rings off, and I lost my boots, lady boots. What did you want to do with those boots? You know? <laughs> what did you think when you first saw the Russians? Poor people. Fighting people. Have kids. You know, that's the, the way I experienced them when they came in. What was the home front like? during this time. What were you doing? Were you supporting the war effort? Uh, did you do any? No, they, they came so fast that we couldn't even evacuate our town. And uh, we were supposed to get out with a ship. You see, I come from Stolp, from Rhenian, which was located on the Stolpe River, going into the Baltic Sea. And uh, we That's were supposed to Yes. Yeah, west of it. Yeah. yeah, west of it. And we were supposed, and I had a 10 months old baby, our daughter, and a sick mother. She was in bed, and so we couldn't go anywhere. And in front of our house, they built a big, um, uh, how do you call it, a bunker, you know, and uh, the officer, a lieutenant, came up and he said, well, you just will have to leave this house, because if we um, defend here, because we were located to an, an autobahn, you know, to a... Um, no, a big street, a, a big highway. A yeah. big yeah. chaussee, a highway, you know. So he said, the it, then you cannot, you cannot stay in this house. You have to leave. And we, I, and he said, you are supposed to get some uh, tickets for the ship. So I went uh, to the office in town, to the city hall, to get my tickets, and the line did not move. And uh, so I finally looked at the door, and uh, there was the officer was just sitting with a girl on his lap, and he said, well, the tickets are all gone, we don't have any more. So they gave, evidently, to the party members all those tickets, and we didn't get any. So I came back, to, uh, and so my grandmother decided that we should go to my uncle's place, and uh, they had a beautiful villa out at the forest, on the end of the forest. And so and we, yeah, so I said, you, you should have seen, this was on the 7th of March, in 45 and uh, so you should have seen the road from all those 
refugees going through on the way. They came from East Prussia, and uh, and all through our town, Stolp and the chaussee and the streets. They were so slick you could hardly cross the street. And I loaded the baby in in Iles, our daughter, into the baby carriage, and had grandmother on my arm. So we had to go. And well, how much is it? It's about thirty or forty-five minutes to walk. There was no transportation whatsoever. The, the town was almost empty. And we came to my aunt's house and rang the doorbell, and in front of it was a jeep standing with a chauffeur. And uh, he said, well, uh, your, uh, our Mrs. Limberg, Ms. Frau Limberg, she's in the house. And so we rang again the doorbell, and then she came out, and uh, she said that my uncle sent, he was an officer in the army, and he sent the jeep to pick up his wife and the two daughters, my two cousins, and uh, that the war was, would be over and uh, he wanted to have them in safety. And so and she said she did not know if she should leave her house and all the possessions, so she was kneeling and prayed to God and she said, show me the way, should I leave my ho home uh, or should I go where it is safe? And she said, if you are here, and she yeah. knocked my grandmother yeah. She knocked my grandfather in her arm and, and she said, well, if you get guests, you don't go out of town, you don't leave your house, you don't say, no, I'm going somewhere, you cannot come. So that God's will, you are my guest, come in. And so she took care of uh, Iris and grandma. And I went back to our old home to pick up my mother. She wasn't able, so the officer helped me to load her on the... On a, on a, Sleigh, on the sleigh, and he helped me bundle her up, and uh, so, and I pulled her, and we had to cross this big bri bridge over the Stolpe River, and uh, so the soldiers helped me, they said we are going to blow up the bridge, the Russians are not far away from here, and we want to hinder the progress getting into the town, and so they helped all push me over the bridge, they had everything ready to detonate the, the bridge and uh, so we were not very far away from that bridge and then we could feel the detonation the vibration of the of the, the ground you know so our bridge was gone we didn't have any way to go back you know and so we came to my end house and then in that same evening we could see that our town from the hill there from the woods that the town was lighted up, you know, big fireball, they, they burned the whole town. And the next day, and we had a, a radio, I must say, we had one of those little folks and fingers, you know, and we listened to the news, and what did they say? The biggest fight ever they had between Kohlberg and, uh, and Stolp, you know, and the, but that the Russians were put back, and the next morning the Russians were there. It was all oh. lies they were telling us. And the Russians came and they had looked for the best house there on this villa and they took the house at the headquarters and we had to move out. But they didn't harm us at that time. They, those were the officers and they arranged that uh, house as their headquarters and we had to leave and we went to a, a minister's house, you know, mm. to... Whose house was this? The minister's in? house. He took us in. No, the one the house you had to leave. The uncle's. That was my my uncle's place, but my uncle my aunt. He was by the Volkssturm, you know, by yeah. by the 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 Volkssturm by the the one who had sent the jeep with his chauffeur to pick up my. And the Russians took his house. The headquarters. Yes. Yeah. Headquarters. Mm -hmm. Where did they? Where did the Russians take you to prison? Uh, in Phoenix was the uh, yeah Phoenix was the house. Where? Yeah. yeah. Uh, where, where the, in, uh, by Berlin, south from Berlin. You know, this was the, the movie th uh, tender. Like, like Hollywood, you know, yeah. and yeah. here. Yeah. So, That's you were, you, were, you, were you kept in Germany then? No. As a prisoner? The, the, we had to walk bis Bosen. So, did they take you to Russia? Yeah, no, no, first bis, bis Bosen. Poland. Bis Poland. Bis Poland. Bis Poland. The old Poland. Yeah. How did they treat you, the Russians? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do that. They give us a piece of uh, horse meat and uh, two slices of dry bread and this, oh. and this was raw. That was the first treatment. The, the first treatment was a soldier took me in the, 
uh, the wine cellar, they had a house, you know, this one, the big villains from the, the movie stars, and he took us, me, me down with a machine gun, and uh, I had no idea, I thought, this is my end. Uh, no, he only want my boots. I had to take my boots out and he gave me his. The one who he had done, nothing. He looked like a poor guy. I was, you know, well, you could not do anything. So, we are, we walk uh, from, uh, from there, this, uh, I guess it's from first Walder of the top. Uh oh, who's coming now? <laughs> yeah, oh, and then we are, uh, when there, we are, we are walked this uh, on a place on a railroad. I remember this, uh, and we are one staying overnight. And in a time when we were walking, we, when we had little wood, we are, we are catched a piece of wood, and then in the evening we make the little fire and cooked as I cooked. Uh, in my cookische, uh, this was raw meat. And then we uh, had, uh, you know, uh, big leaves from the grass, we call it sour lump. Ne? This is uh, like no, spinach. Ne? And then uh, we, uh, I eat this. Ne? Uh, this cooking, oh, you see, I have still have in my garage. We bought this even with after the war over to the United States, I still have it. Where did they take you? Where? Uh, where how is he taking me or where? Oh, where? Where? Uh, now, this person, uh, this was the second time uh, that he checked us. Also, in, in, by person, was in, in, in a place uh, who, like, uh, what Hitler built with little houses. In so a little house, he put always 100 men in. You can understand, 100 men in a. So, like this here. Ne? Yeah, not, not even so high. Uh, it's one little house, anyway. And da, uh, many times we had to come out, so he counted us always 100 men. And uh, then the one place he had the officer, uh, the one even high officer, uh, she had separated from us. And then uh, uh, when she always asked for uh, workers to help to go to work, I was always a I come to. And uh, you know, uh, I even was thinking about you know, from here to escape eh, is no way, especially when, not can, when you cannot uh, uh, speak uh, the English perfect, uh, no, the English, the Polish uh, 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 language. What part of Poland were you in? What? The Poland is in the, in the southern part, from between, oh, you mentioned Lodz, ne? Yeah. this is very close to Lodz there. Uh, what kind of work do they have you doing? One time I was picking up old meat from, from, the, from the railroad station, but was vergammelt and we had to bring on a dump plate. That was Bunny, she was walking her dog and, and oh. she bought the paper. <laughs> she thought we might like to have an extra yeah. clipping. <laughs> yeah, uh, oder we, we rent and picked up meat from, from the slaughterhouse. Uh, and uh, there was, they had butchered in the slaughterhouse uh, a whole, uh, a small cow. Uh, mm -hmm. And there a half, I, I saw it carrying on the, on the wagon and I broke together and she made fun of me. Uh, while I was a German uh, soldier uh, and could not even... So weak. <laughs> yeah, weak <laughs> uh, piece of meat. Uh. When were you finally released as a prisoner? Oh, that, 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 you see, there came the release. First, they always make a check out for one, two, and three. There is, there is no, uh, they not know much from what, what is different. Ne? And uh, we had to come 
in hundred men groups out on an open place and there was a, a woman doctor sitting on a chair and the soldier was staying with the emperor beside her to keep the sun from her head. And then you had to stay there and then she, she always looked at you and then she said one, two or three. Ne? And I was three while I was, had a big beard in the time already, no shape. And, uh, and then she said three. Ne? So by three you had to walk back. The same way you where you came from, you go back. Our on the way back, she checked us again, again. Uh, in the time she checked us, and then uh, uh, no much eat, uh, also nothing to eat extra. So, uh, but then uh, I had no a, a friend of me, on uh, he said, Helmut, oh, you come with me. We are one all the time together, ne? and I said, and he was one. And the one people came right away to the railroad station and one in boxcars shipped to, ship to Sibirian. You never heard anything. You know, and, and this is what I think, who they have all the intelligence and all these people that were healthy and not okay, uh, what they still have keep in, in Russia. And uh, there is Sinja whole areas by uh, in Mongolia who, who they have built new towns and maybe this is all uh, the two uh, jobs uh, then uh, what they have built up on ammunition and on modern weapon now eh? that is that is most of them made uh, as of German intelligence and you came to this country in 1951. Two. Two. When did you finally return to Germany from prison? When we were allowed? Uh, this was in. Uh, this was set. The end of 45. No, 46. 46. 46. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when yeah. I came back, uh, then erst nach zu Berlin und dann von Berlin wieder aus zu zu Stolp. Und <coughs> von Stolp wir wir kamen. Uh, to in June of 1946, we were shipped out. In June Again, in boxcars, you know, and just... 60 people. Them. This time, only 60. Yeah. The German box comes in smaller. And where were you sent? In Lübeck, also in the... In the well, first we came to Stettin, Cessin, yeah. and they led us there on, on an outlet of the train for three days. Didn't get anything to eat or... They just uh, put us out on a track, you know, and uh, we had to wait there till they finally got an engine, you know, to, yeah. to put on the car. And then we came to Lübeck, that was in the English zone. Yeah, British zone. British so we went through the eastern zone, they didn't stop there, and I heard from the first train that got out, my grandfather was on that, they were all relocated in eastern Germany, but uh, us, they, they brought to the British sector, to Lübeck. And, and later on, from Kiel. there to Kiel. This was just a, a camp, camp first. Also from camp to camp. And each camp had... Oh, that's, that wasn't better than I don't know. Yeah. But in Kiel, we stayed Kiel, there. Uh, we are Six years. We, we were there for five years when... Uh, yeah, when Helmut got the papers, you know, to fill out so that we as uh, refugees had a chance to, to, go to the be States. relocated in another See, country uh, that's, in America. That's what the picture then uh, here yeah. in front. And and so we are we sent here. Sent we had country. already in Bonga City our picture that had, we had the idea that we uh, yeah. uh, had a way. It took two years to go through, you know, uh, to we, we had all those was an awful lot of red tapes that we found out if we had been members of the party and yeah. uh, where we came from and, and uh, it took two years to Just clear the way. It used to be uh, in uh, an army camp, uh, the uh, Air Force camp, where uh, they had so us there. was there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. we stayed first, we had to come there and uh, we got all those shots, you know, 
to get to this country. And we stayed there for about a week. Uh, yeah, because week, every day people checked the, the list, the ship lists of if they on, on the on the ship. And, and then on finally on the fifth day, you know, they said we were screened and uh, our name appeared on the list. So, Helmut was made uh, a police chief on the ship. We, we had were to watch. Separated. I People were so crazy. Women also and, and children and, and yeah, Helmut. When, when uh, this was Easter, ne? when they served as Easter eggs. Ne? Yeah, yeah. They, they we left on Good Friday. Yeah. And uh, the people were, oh, she dump us uh, in the ocean, uh, she not bring us to the United States. This was all what she wanted. just a small time. group of Germans, you know, most of them were from uh, all the countries in the East. Czechs and uh, Hungarians. And there was just a small group of Germans. And when we yeah. came from, uh, uh, from New York, with Chicago we were on about now. We were five families and from Chicago we were the only ones going this way. And all these people this were on this way. Yeah. Yeah. So and some had already the addresses where you weren't going. Yes. But we didn't have anything. Also we we, we didn't get our envelope uh, until before. we arrived in New York. We were the last one to leave the ship because Helmut had to be responsible that the ship was clear. And, and so. When you pass the Statue of Liberty? That was uh, on the 11th day, you know, we were 10 days on the way and we landed, uh, it was from Friday till next week on Sunday, and we landed in, in New York on Sunday, and uh, there they were all union members, and they did not work on Sunday, so there was nobody to unload the ship, and we all had bought luggage. Yeah, and, uh, and that who was well looking and when our luggage came down yeah. in this big net? Mm. They had about mm. ten or a dozen boxes of them in the nets and they were coming down careless, you know, <laughs> half of that luggage broke into pieces, you could see. And I was standing there and looking, oh, I hope not ours is among them. And oh. so anyway, on the 11th then day uh, then, when we, when we were brought into the harbor That's what, an island, unload, you know, we, in this, yes. was the half now, what, what you might make a statue we were on the ship, as, as you know, and, and uh, everybody was clapping their hands. Oh, we made it, they made it. We were all shouting and, and so on. The, we just had tears in, in our eyes and we were standing there holding each other. And we said, yes, we made it too. Thankful that we made it to this country. And then we came through Ellis Island. Again, we were the last ones who got through because I had to wait for Helmut and uh, everything had to be in order. The ship had to be left in order as it left in Bremerhaven. Even some things had to be painted. Ne? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, there were yeah. painting crews and uh, uh, marvelous, you know, everything was clean. And uh, uh, then they were calling our name over the loudspeaker, you know, and we, we heard it and we didn't know. And so finally um, he said, are you Mr. and Mrs. Helmut Pole? No. Yes, you know, and he had the envelope, and it was addressed to the station master in Ponga City, Oklahoma. And uh, we opened it up, and there were the railroad tickets for Helmut, me, and for Iris, and uh, a twenty dollar in it. it. Was our proviant to go from New York, and uh, we were three days on the way. It was the whole day to Chicago on the Erie, and in Chicago we had to change on the yeah, morning day. Mornings by 7 o'clock. In a time when we yeah. then won here in Newkirk later. Mm. Yeah. We, we came to Newkirk. We were think, thinking, this is the train he brought us here. Yeah, we came to Newkirk. Now there's no railroad station anymore, but at that time. But anyway, we did not, we were not let out. We had to go to Congress City. Well, I think we have, I'd like to, Shall we go down to the store and show Bruce the... You're back. Uh, you you know, uh, Joe, we had a map. I just had a map from school. And we looked it up. And uh, there was Oklahoma on it. But there were only two towns marked on it. Tulsa and Oklahoma City. There was no Ponga City on it. <laughs> it's nice. You see, this was my old dad. Yeah. Yeah. Our, uh, he wa is, is not insulated on he was eating my gas, so I, uh, 
I could buy this one in Bottlesville in your hometown, yeah? You, you yeah. Are, uh, you are from Bottlesville, yeah? yeah? Now, uh, when the, the uh, city service, there was a little bakery in, in uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so, Six shelves here. Huh? Six shelves, and you want four pans or three? Three. 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 Oh, I was on. It's eighteen pans. Yeah. You know, it came like this, so I do it. Yeah. See, our our oven at, at uh, Irene's, where, yeah. where our other shop was, had the same metal, uh, yeah. and I used to bake all the bread right on the shelf. Yeah. And it came uh, on this shelf. Right on the shelf. Yeah. No, I have here this shelf. You see. Uh, to use it for like French bread, I use this one. Oh, yeah, okay. three, three long French, one dish. Well, the keeps, order the vena, ne? It keeps the stuff off the shelf. Yeah. And uh, is, I don't have anything <laughs> to, to show you. Yeah. The, uh, like a uh, you see, uh, uh, baking, do uh, you use the black pan? Uh -huh. yeah. yes. Even your cookies, or do you use the silver pans for your cookies? No, no, I need that. No. No. Yeah. Do you keep your sponge in the refrigerator? or? Yeah. 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 And even in the winter? You can. Uh, the uh, Jack used to pull his out of the refrigerator. I guess it was in the winter time yeah. uh, because it got too, it ended up getting too cold in the. In the uh, yeah, no, because uh, the, the temperature in the refrigerator was always dropping in the winter time. No, uh, you see, I take my uh, my spots in, in the refrigerator in front in this way. And then, uh, uh, then uh, like when I make them now, uh, after a while, you leave them, then I make them ready, and I have them sitting here of this is. Uh, but a little bit more, mm -hmm. and uh, I use them for uh, six hours. About then I make them again over. So or you'll come back this evening and do it. Again? No, the more when I start out, uh, so by four thirty, I'm here. Then I make them again, yeah. and then by uh, uh, then I make straight dough. Yeah. When you make a Say a gallon of, of rye bread. How, about how much sponge do you put in it? Uh, oh, uh, about uh, about uh, eight pounds. Or by it depends. By when when I make uh, eight eight pounds dough, I use about two pounds flour. Eight pounds of dough would be maybe yeah. half a gallon. Or yeah, uh, about. Uh, oh, you know, I I. Use uh, I, I I scale everything. Uh, everything's what I do. Uh, I make it to scale. Do you, do you uh, when you mix your dough? Do, do you ever have to add water to or or add flour to it? No. You I scale it all out. Yeah, I scale out to it. You know what, what, how you how many you need. That's how I that's how I do my scaling. Yeah. Uh, when you scale, uh, uh, like uh, uh, see uh, this for. This is Scarish, uh, German. I have not still some German recipe that I use German scale. Then, ne. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a gram? Kil a kilogram. Ne. Oh, oh ne. And that way you so don't have to convert the recipes to No, anything. no. Uh, then this this comes not like this. Ne. Then when you, like, uh, 465 grams. Uh, and a scale like this, do you have to fiddle them on? That is no time. Yeah, I see what you mean. So you have to do it. That is, that is just the easy way. Uh, uh, Sometimes I have all three mixers running. Uh, see, and uh, when I started out, I had the champagne mixer. Now I have all the whole ones. Uh, so, uh, this is the old one. Yeah, I bought another. I bet you that still goes like a champ, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Then. Uh, uh, this is like uh, then I I bought in Oklahoma City of when the Hoover place. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you should, uh, I don't think so. 
Jerry Amoson? Yeah, is this it? He's, he's not with Hobart. He has his own. It's Jerry Amoson Equipment Supply. He does sell and, and with uh, Hobart, but he's not the Hobart dealer anymore. But he's still there. Yeah, he's still there. I'll have to, I'll have to mention to him. Yeah, that I, that but I you see him. You <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see, he showed me not even this, this one here. This is a, a little mixer, huh? Eh? Or the, uh, the still. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. You see, I, I use it for, for, to make rip, uh, ripping stuff, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, or when I make, uh, like, a chef, a chef, a thought, or like, what we had there, the dog, my wife had a little mix of there. Mm -hmm. uh, this I make only small things. I, you know, in, uh, you cannot sell anything here what, what you have not to order. Also. Then I have no refrigerator cases, so I don't use it. So if you have, you don't make black force cake unless you have one on order. When I when I have an order done, I make two or three, uh, one for us two. <laughs> yeah, I see. Now you see, uh, you have to do everything uh, like uh, what the people want, not like what I want. Yeah. When I started out, uh, like Brötchen, eh? Brötchen, I make only two yeah. uh, They come out by two o'clock, and uh, what is left, you put in cellophane. I use still cellophane like this over there, the roll. And uh, uh, the you can keep it and you can reheat it. Yeah. And when you reheat it, this is never frozen. Yeah. I have never anything frozen. And then, uh, yeah, I have frozen food. Yeah. <laughs> but since, uh, uh, since our, this is not. When you live in a small town, you have to do everything but what, what, the, people what the people want and what, what you can sell. Mm -hmm. uh, so there there is no profit. Ne? But they, when you to, uh, I even when you see uh, that you use uh, uh, a day old uh, as a counter, ne? you know, you better do no use day old. Ne? But then the people is waiting. For the day old stuff. For the day old stuff. And they buy it. But that is fresh. Then uh, she never get anything so fresh like like it's getting in a bakery. Uh, I have been to a convention in uh, in Kansas. The Kansas Baker Association had uh, invited me uh, while well, I'm here on the state line many times to uh, to to a convention. Yeah. And then they have all always showing uh, some bakery schools or some bakery like. Sarah Lee is in, uh, in El Dorado. Uh -huh. And uh, we have been three times there. You know, I've, I never have seen in my life uh, like the tunnel oven, ne, where the, the, the band is going through and they make angel foods. Ne. I, I thought, uh, my, uh, I only see no angel foods in my life. Ne. And they make angel foods for four months ahead of time. Four months? Four months, they were dated for un, un, uh, the beginning of January and uh, in, we were in September there. And uh, they were going to California. In big semi trailers, they load shells for it. Uh, I, I put only my bread here and this wagon is the only wagon I use. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but you see, what shall I do more? I make my living. What, what, uh, what else do you want? Um, yeah. Is this your proof box? Here? Yeah. Uh, this, uh, when I make steam here, yeah. and the steam came here over. Yeah. This, boil, this boils the water? This boils the water. Nice. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a little burner. Over here, uh, you see, like Newkirk had bad water, uh, ever two, maybe three months or maybe faster, uh, that stuff up here in this uh, um, well, you know. It gets clogged up. When it's clogged up here underneath, so you have to go in. I have a drill, ne? then I build it in pieces, ne? and drill it out again. Yeah. So you don't have any dry heat other than just, you just put steam in it? Uh, yes, steam. Yes, steam. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, 
Uh, this I do, I start right in the morning, ne, and then uh, I use it, ne. So, uh, uh, And what about this? What is this oh, this is an oh, no, storage bin. Cookies. Okay, uh, you know, uh, but here, here you have two burners down, ne. Mm -hmm. And, uh, what do you, uh, does your thermostat work or do you? Oh yeah, yeah. No. no, no, you need it. You go 400 and you bake your rye bread? Mo most of the time, uh, most of the time I have them 400. Yes. I have such a small oven, when I load it, when I fill it with bread, the 12 yeah. pans, it yeah. drops. It drops no, like no, uh, no. 30, 40 degrees. So yeah. I have you see, I, I have here the two burner. Mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, like, most of the time I, I turn it down uh, when I not work, then uh, I save the gas. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, they're gonna eat pretty soon, uh, pretty good. But uh, that, uh, this, this is insulated now. Uh, uh, here this, the wall is only a little look warm when you uh, even have them done all day long. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, because it's got such big jets in there, it doesn't yeah, drop when yeah, you fill it no, with bread. No, no. Mine has a one single jet in the bottom. Yeah, no. It was made. No. It was made more or less for a, a cookie type oven or something yeah, like that. I, which I know what you what, what you say. I, do. Uh, I saw one in Richard Darling. So, uh, you know, this is always things uh, you cannot change it. Né? When uh, when you have a, a bigger oven. Uh, like this one is not a problem at all. Yeah. With this one, uh, here, I cooked meat for many years for the for meetings. When the, like the bank or the so big organization have meetings, mm -hmm. and I cooked meat here like this one. Or I not do it anymore than see not pay for. So uh, most uh, uh, with like this little mixer over there, uh, this upper alt one, um, I use for cookies. Most of the cookies I make with this one. And this is the bread mixer. The, the older one? The oldest one, yeah. You know, I got a, when I worked at a grocery store in Midwest City, yeah. uh, we got a mixer just like that. I think it was, it was built in the 20s, maybe? Is that right? Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You see, I bought him off use when in a grocery store in, uh, here in Scheidler and they had wired him wrong way. They couldn't not get power out. Eh? Or now, and I had a friend of mine and, uh, you know, uh, like when I have trouble with, uh, even with the gas up and so, the, uh, the, you don't find anybody here. They don't understand anything. Or they do not the wrongest things, but you even can think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he said, uh, first, I have a nice motor. We put a new motor here on, and these things. Yeah. When they put this new motor, so since then, it's working. It's working fine since then. Yeah. That's how this, this mixer was. They, they brought it over and set it up, and boy, it made the awfulest noise when we turned it on. But I mean, it, it the whole time I was there, well, it ran better than most of the newer mixers, I think. It, yeah, I know, yeah. Go really uh, you see, uh, you cannot get here. When I had one time trouble with, uh, with the donut fryer, I have already the fifth donut fryer. Uh, I have now two weeks ago done uh, the, uh, my thermostat would not work. You know, can't find anybody here. So you, so you have to go uh, stick in your pocket deep that you get ma a man from Oklahoma City here. He has to drive up here? He comes to uh, drive up from there uh, and make it here. So if you get something, you want to make sure you get something good that's going to work? Yeah, no, this is the reason that I had changed everything to my uh, robot. Then uh, there was ja noch Emerson in Oklahoma City. And, uh, his father left the one on live. I think he is not in live anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, sometimes you find people maybe in in Tulsa, but uh, Tulsa is too far away, eh? and uh, much easier is 
from Kansas, our from Kansas, is, you know, you live in the United States and you think, oh, you can take everything from state to state. I even could not buy the flower in, Oklahoma, in, in Kansas, it was a state line. I had to have a license. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it, 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 sometimes people not know what, but I, mean, I have to pick up my yeast now in Wichita. I go every three weeks to pick up yeast. A 50 pound box yeast mm -hmm. on uh, Oklahoma City since Wonder Bread quit it in uh, Oklahoma City, so you don't have the yeast anymore. Red Star? Red Star. I get Red Star yeast from Frisbee Food Company. Frisbee? They come from Tulsa? Mm -hmm. they, no. have a, they have an out office in Tulsa, they yeah. have an outlet there. Oh, and, uh, now Frisbee is not coming here. Yeah, that is the reason, you know. Uh, see, uh, we had uh, the, the Red Star company in Oklahoma City. After they quit it, uh, the Wonder Bay quit it, so Red Star quit it. And in Wichita, she took over, and Wichita quit it. Now it's come from Kansas City. I was have a place where I go far north from uh, Wichita to pick my, up my 50 pound news. Well, uh, I have. So you get it fresh, right? I very get it. fresh when you get it. I get the fresh. Chances yeah. are that the yeast we have in Oklahoma City comes from there, from from uh, Kansas City. Then. Yeah, it comes from Kansas City. Or from Tulsa. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, uh, I cannot say. Mm. Only these people see not know anything. Any time when I come there, they have new people working. Joe, you get yeah. enough for us? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you show me something? And and you picture.